What's up, guys? It is Saturday, November 26th. And I'm going to walk you guys through the differences between Occam's Razor and Leeds Machine. And I'm going to get into some Q&A. So let's jump right in here. And Occam's and Leeds Machine are 50% off right now. Off my products. Razor and Leeds Machine. Link in the description. Yeah. And if you guys won second place in the giveaway contest for the $2,000 off, someone should have reached out. But if not, they will be reaching out soon um it ranges in price there's options for just the content uh options for the content plus the calls and then options to add in the fitness and fashion packages and the, the photo stuff so it ranges um based you know, based on what you get. So get on one of those calls. Um, it is several thousand dollars, obviously. It is the best system in the industry. But we have payment plans and flexibility. So just get on one of the calls to go over those details. Um, all right, so here's the major differences here between the two programs, okay? So we have Occam's Razor. It gives you the basics of online game and it gives you the full strategy for cold approach. So you have Occam's Razor here. Um, Occam's also comes with the basic texting charts, but it doesn't have all the advanced texting charts. So Leads Machine contains all this shit here. It gives you the all the message sequences to send on Tinder, Bumble, Hinge. Uh, what to text once you get an online lead, Once what to text once you get a cold approach lead from night game or day game, confirmation sequences for texting, how to double and triple stack time slots, utilizing what I call a floater spot, which is a girl on call for the evening without a set time, <clears throat> how to cancel on them, how to move them up and forward and backward for the time that's set, how to frame date straight to the house, what to do if they flake without an excuse or with an excuse or canceling you can cancel on them as well how to manage everything with your calendar schedule and reschedule and then this is a big chart they can say oh i don't know if it's safe to come over to your house let's meet at a place i want to or i want to bring a friend right let's meet at a place i want to or i don't know you well enough to meet up with you i don't go to a stranger's house because i'm not that kind of girl and then you have to deal with ignores which are going to happen everywhere what do you what to do if she ignores you once twice three times etc so all that's covered in Leads Machine, like all my full texting and online messaging sequences. Occam's has all the cold approach training. They both train you on dates, and there's infield on dates for both products as well. Closing is <clears throat> more Leads Machine focused. Occam's Razor is more rotation focused. So the two of these give you the majority of my training system. If you want to know which one to start with first, I would recommend Occam's Razor. Unless you're already getting a bunch of dates and hookups and you want to like add in a big X factor, then I would go with Leads Machine. But Occam's Razor was built to be like the be all end all product. So it contains pretty much everything. I just greatly expanded upon the texting and online messaging sequences in Leads Machine um, to really multiply the results. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense. It is on 50% off through the end of the day today with the link in the description. All right, so let me look at some questions here. Um, yeah, you left this on a video comment, Jared. I, I, uh, I checked with my team. It's because you had no budget selected. The program is not free, obviously. So that's why it got canceled. Um, let's see.
it depends on the context here. So like if it's at all rude or like, you know, she's being bitchy or whatever, or when they're trying to use you, obviously refuse. But, but if you isolate the girl at the bar, for instance, and she expects you to buy a drink, or if you take the girl out on a date and she expects you to buy a drink, then, you know, that's to be expected and it's not a big deal. Um, let's see. Bring turmoil in her life to be able to retain her. Long-term retention is about checking as many boxes as possible and creating like a really strong bond, right? Like last night I got a text from multiple girls telling me they love me, right? They're not my girlfriend. They're just rotation girls, but I bang them better than any guy ever has. They have the most fun with me out of all the guys they've dated. I'm the most authentic and real. And, th and that's like super, super, super refreshing because almost everyone around hot girls is kissing their ass over complimenting them, giving them too much attention, letting them get away with whatever, letting them play games, letting them pull bullshit, um, finishing too soon in sex if they do get to bang them, which they usually don't, etc. So you want to come across as the full package guy, her best option, and really blow her out of the water on all dimensions. That's how you retain them long term. So right now in rotation, I have like a whole host of like super, super hot girls, fashion models, chick that's in mega models, um, you know, just stacked up super hot chicks, right? And they have lots of guys after them and they all want to be with me. <clears throat> I don't blow up their phone. I don't kiss their ass, et cetera. I have a, I have a video coming out soon on boundaries and not kissing their ass, but you just want to be able to, and you want to, you, you have to be able to let them go if they fuck up. That's another big component. And this can't be an act. Like a lot of people, even myself included, when I first started to learn about, you know, the hardcore retention strategies on the hot girls, it's like, all right, I'm going to wait till she fucks up and I'm going to show her that I, I don't put up with that. And, you know, I'm going to put her in her place and I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to suck up to her and all this. And, and it, it starts to become too outer game tactic based. Right, like your confidence and your frame and the, the way that you carry yourself shouldn't be a set of outer game tactics. It's the same as with like sexualizing your verbals. <clears throat> a lot of clients that I get, they say, oh, well, I'm just sitting on the date or in the interaction in the cold approach waiting to say a sexual line. Oh, I, I have to sexualize. I can't end up in the friend zone. And uh, it's super important to sexualize the interaction, as John said. So I'm waiting for my window to sexualize. No. That's stupid. It's not like you got her no matter what. The frame is you got her no matter what. You're good enough. You don't need to win her over. You don't need to make her like you. You don't need to kiss her ass or, or you know, do tricks and jump through hoops and, or whatever else to make her like you. So you make sexual spontaneous jokes. It's just a matter of course. It's something you do because you think it's funny as they come up spontaneously. You're not like monitoring the conversation closely for your for your big moment. Okay. And the same goes, goes true when you're going to like escalate back at the house and like all these different things. Guys are always like trying to deploy these techniques as if it's like an outer game tactic um, that they, they need to like find the perfect window for. So just be the man as, as cliche as that sounds, have a strong frame, a strong presence, don't kiss your ass. And then check as many boxes as possible across the board so that she's super into you. Um, let's see. Let's see. If you're running multiple Tinder accounts, and by the way, a lot of people are like, why can't I just use one Tinder account more often and, and for more time? They limit the amount of matches you can get on one account in a day, right? Like contrast, 
you swiping for a half hour, even an hour, whatever, right? And then, or okay, let's say like a half hour versus you swiping for two hours, right? So that would be a half hour times four. Let's say you have, you know, you swipe for two hours or you make four accounts and swipe for a half hour on each one. With the multiple accounts, you're going to get way more matches because it has like a limit per account and stuff like that. It's it's the same principle as if you were to think about all the matches between you and three friends, right? right? What's more, your matches alone or your matches plus three friends matches, obviously with the three friends. So that's the motivation for making multiple profiles. And it's not that time consuming <clears throat> because when you go to these additional profiles, you only need to use them like once a day. And all the girls that swiped on you in the past 24 hours are going to come front loaded in your swiping. So you go to the second account, swipe, 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 match, match, match. Once the matches stop, you pop the next account. Swipe, 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 match, match, match. You pop the next account. <clears throat> and you can run them from your browser, just different browsers for each account. So one in Chrome, one in Firefox, one in Opera, for instance. How do you avoid not matching the same girl? It's, it's going to happen inevitably. <clears throat> If you recognize her, just swipe left. Or if you've already matched her, swipe left. But if not, and she's like, what the fuck? Then, or if they see you on multiple accounts, just say you deleted Tinder on your, you got a new phone. You got a new phone and there's like some glitch where it still has your old account. Um, No, compliments do not give your power away. If anybody saw my video recently on frames, Framing is the most important concept in the game. So if you're complimenting a girl and not being a pussy about it, then it's fine. I compliment girls all the time. It's normally coming from the frame of like flirting and sexualizing. So more in person, I'm like, damn, like your ass looks fucking awesome in that outfit. Let me see. I like spin around and look at it. Um, let's see. You just don't want to do it where you're sucking up to her or kissing her ass. <laughs> That's the difference. I think the guy should pay on the first date. It's not a fucking big deal. Um, when I first started doing formal game, I was thinking like, oh, uh, I always have to, you know, I can't have the girl lose respect for me by paying for the date. So I always have to offer to split. And I did that a lot. And a lot of times it's fine, but some of the times it's not, which means some girls get pissed. Some girls get offended. Some girls hold it against you and won't see you again. And you might think, oh, well, fuck those girls. They're not all gold diggers, the ones that get upset about it. The traditional you know, mental model of inviting a girl on a date is that the guy will pay. You should be doing coffee and drink dates only for your first date if she doesn't come to the house. You shouldn't be going out for dinners. That's because it costs more. It's not really that important. It's just too formal of an environment. You shouldn't be going and doing activities like fucking climbing a rock wall or some stupid shit like that. And she gets tired out and, and you know, or watching a movie at a movie theater where you can't vibe. Just stick to coffee and drink dates. Do one coffee each or like one to two drinks each. That will keep costs down and you will get a systematic routine going on those dates. But I think there's no problem with paying for the first date. If you invited her out with coffee, it'll be like 10 bucks. <clears throat> with, with drinks, it'll be like less than 20 bucks. And then after that, you can talk about, um, you can talk about potentially splitting it. And just see, you know, like in America, like most of my viewers in America, right? In America, it's more expected the guy pays most of the time. <clears throat> but when you're in Europe, they look at like who's earning more and like shit like that. So like if you don't have a job or you don't earn much and she has a job, like you can t talk about splitting it or whatever. It's not a big deal. Um, I just tried meeting a girl three times and she canceled twice and flaked once. If she cancels with an, ex with an excuse, treat it as valid. That's the best strategy. Because if she's not interested, she'll just ghost you or block you. If she gives an excuse, just say, cool, no problem. Shit comes up in people's schedules all the time, especially if she's giving you a bunch of details. 
it's not a big deal. Flaking is a routine matter, of course, even at the most advanced levels, because things come up in people's schedules. Right? Like there's a bunch of fucking bullshit coaches out there that say, "Oh, when your game gets good enough, you'll never get rejected again. You'll never have flakes again." That's total bullshit. Okay. Use common sense. Stuff comes up in your own schedule, does it not? And so is the case for other people. So is the case for girls. So girls are going to be constantly rescheduling and canceling. You can never get away from that. Also, with, with coaches that claim you can avoid rejection completely, that's also bullshit. There's going to be girls that aren't interested in you, I promise. Always. There's going to be girls that are in a bad mood that are really in a relationship where they don't want to cheat where they don't want to talk to any random guys, where they're enjoying a night with their friends that they haven't seen in a while. There's any number of scenarios. The point is to, to know that rejection is going to happen sometimes when you do cold approach and flaking is going to happen no matter what. Okay, So that, that's why you double and triple stack time slots. That's why you utilize floater spots and, and so on and so forth. I have guys in my eight-week program that – all the time they were never getting any dates they come on the program they start getting shit tons of dates and they start double and triple stacking time slots and that makes you flake proof because when a girl cancels you have a backup or two all right um the chicks are more elegant sweet fun feminine cool receptive to, to cold approach the hot ones don't act like they're too cool for school um more genuine, more down to earth. I'm probably going to be here a long time in Brazil. I, li I like the chicks a lot here. Uh, let's see. Just Google. There's there's directions online for doing full resets. But you need to make sure that you use a new phone number and new email. So it's not linking. Um. Yeah, Poland's tough. Like I have a I have an advanced friend there right now. It's at 450 late count. He's in Warsaw. Not to mention it's like overrun by fucking annoying pickup companies like Ultimate Man Project and and you know, I think James Tusk is running programs there and a bunch of fucking idiots. So you go into the malls. Like I I I lived there 2018 and 2019. When I left in 2019, I remember like one of the last weekends I was there, I was in the mall and there was like five boot camps going on. It was sickening. And, the, and these other fucking companies destroyed like the best night night game venues and stuff because there's just retards in there. Um, I'm glad I got the fuck out of there. But my friend, my point is, my friend that, <coughs> excuse me, my friend that's there, that's 450 late count, he's like, my past four dates, the girls wouldn't come home with me. I'm like, yeah, yeah, there's some retards going online and saying, yeah, Poland's easy mode that have never been there. Okay, there's retards online saying, oh, Brazil's easy mode that have never been there. I've been here three years. I've lived all around the world. It is not easy mode at all here. You need game. I have intermediate friends that have come here at 60 lay count that couldn't get laid, like got laid like once in two months. Um, you need game here. Girls don't respect guys that are beta and that are pussies here, which is almost all guys. And um, my friend that's in Poland, like, they won't come straight to the house. Like Polish and Ukrainian culture, they equate a request of coming straight to the house on the first date as tantamount to asking, do you want to have sex, which they swiftly refuse. And a lot of them don't even want to come home on the first date. So um, I would say Ukraine is, is probably the hardest country for getting quick hookups. And that's just based on, you know, this is all, of course, pre-war and, you know, it's a mess over there right now. But that is... It took me like two to five dates to close girls. Like I would and typically in my schedule, it'd be like first date, rotation girl, like, you know, first date, rotation girl, blah, blah, blah. When I was in Ukraine, it'd be like third date, fourth date, rotation girl. Like it, it took forever to get them on rotation, even get them to close. I had scenarios where it would be a fourth date in public and they still weren't comfortable kissing yet, which is insane. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I would say the hard mode countries are, are the prude ones. Uh, culturally prude or the the hardcore religious ones which ties into prudeness um i lived a lot of my life with no obligations or responsibility i mean my, my last i did brief stints 
2014 and 2015 at HP and Hewlett Packard, but they're like very brief. I got fired from both for doing too much game. So my last real job was like in 2013, which is almost 10 years ago. So I got more serious about my business. Um, like last year, my business did seven figures. Uh, this year, it's going to do multiple seven figures. And I'm expecting next year it'll do eight figures. But uh, I do, you know, I I would like, okay, like the year I did uh, 246 new closes. And I only measured like full sex closes. I didn't measure uh, non-sex hookups, right? And that year, I was just like... The, Besides gym and Muay Thai, those were like the only two times I would take a break. And that would hurt me too, because I would like skip dates straight to the house to go to the fucking gym, um, <laughs> which I hadn't done in years prior. But I was either on a date with a rotation girl at the club, working leads over text, or swiping Tinder or Bumble and, and Hinge. I would oscillate between those. Usually, like, I would have dates stacked all day long, dates and rotation girls. And in between, or even during dates sometimes, I would work all the leads and source new leads from online. And so most days between 2013 until about a couple years ago, I was just doing game activities at all times. There was no job. There was no, I mean, I had this job, but I didn't start my YouTube channel until 2017. And which was stupid. I should have started it way sooner, but I had like a legal situation that never went to trial, but that's, that's kind of why I didn't start it sooner. Um, but I didn't, I didn't, um, you know, start getting more serious and working a lot of hours in my company until a couple years ago. So before that, it was just girls at all times. I, I would see two to five girls a day and I would just spend most of my days banging or setting up new new banging um and drinking uh, i stopped drinking like three years ago as well um so i still mostly have no obligations or responsibility other than the company we're, we're trying to really scale the company which we are well on our way to doing um with cold traffic which is ads on youtube and facebook um that transcend that's that's kind of like the holy grail when you this is like a simple you know, cold traffic one-on-one, you serve your ad, right? When you guys see an ad on YouTube or Facebook, someone clicks the ad, they watch a presentation, they end up on a, a sales call or a call with a, a setter who then puts them on a sales call. And then if they're interested in the program, then they enroll in the program. But lots of times these are people who've never heard of my brand and never heard of me before. And there's something called return on investment, ROI. So if you're spending x dollars on ads and then you're making like two times x in the revenue from the programs then they call that like 2x roi and then of course there's you know employee expenses and all the different services we use internally in the company and there's um commissions for the sale you know but you make the ads better you make the sales presentation better you make the calls better etc and you can keep getting better and better metrics. And we're going to be hitting a point soon where we can just spend a lot of money on ads, reach a fuck ton of people, irrespective of our reach on my YouTube channel and TikTok and other avenues. And we can reach a fuck ton of people, right? And then that's called scaling, right? And then as we're scaling, I just need more coaches, which I have all lined up, all the best underground guys. More sales guys to take the calls, which we already have. And that's it, right? And then we expand in these other niches. We, we formally partnered with Jay Vincent to sell the fitness stuff. We formally partnered with a former GQ stylist to help with the style and fashion component. 2023, we're most likely bringing in Paul Jenka to handle... Um, the transition from just casual dating to relationship or marriage. We're probably bringing in Ross Jeffries to handle dealing with internal traumas. And we're probably bringing in a longevity and health branch that Liz and I might, may run because we're 
well versed in a lot of that stuff now. I have been for a long time, but but she's been combing through lots of books as well. So, yeah, I mean, I think twenty twenty three is going to be the big year where we we really explode. And no one has a system anywhere close to mine. No one has results anywhere close to my own personal results, and no one has any results close to the results of my clients. No one, and, and sadly, what you know, because I'd, I'd I'd appreciate it if there was other good systems in the industry that I could collaborate with and stuff like that. But I don't even think anyone in 2022 has anything even remotely close to the quality of coaching I was offering when I started coaching in 2012. I was getting guys laid three for three nights on boot camps in 2012. <clears throat> I don't hear about any, <clears throat> excuse me. I don't hear about anyone doing that even in the modern day. It's usually just the opposite. And I've heard thousands and thousands of stories. I took training with this coach, didn't get laid, took training with this coach, didn't get laid. That's unfortunately the story I hear most of the time. And then they're skeptical to train with me, especially with all the fucking negative defamation out there. But they're like, hey, th these four coaches promised me they'd get me better. And I'm like, dude, we'll start getting you laid on week one with a very high chance. And here's exactly how we'll do it. And if you don't believe me, go look at this proof page. That's a thousand testimonials. And then they become one of those testimonials and they crush it. So at the end of the day, the best system will win. We finally have the right team and right marketing behind us. So there's no doubt in my mind we will take over the industry. I think it'll be next year. Okay, let's keep going through some questions here. And by the way, for people that joined late, we have Occam's Razor, Occam's Razor and Leads and Machine, 50% off the link in the description there. Um, I mean, this, this kind of shit happens all the time. Like, I've been with Liz since February 2020, but I get close with rotation girls, right? Like, I have multiple rotation girls in love with me. Sometimes they have to move away. Sometimes they get back with an ex. Sometimes um, they uh, get annoying or like pain in the ass and I cut them off, right? But I'm human. Like you, you get feelings for different girls you're spending time with. So, you know, Josh, my, my original business partner, Josh, that was just on the stream yesterday, he says he falls in love with a new girl like every week. So... You know, that's part of the fun of all this is that you're constantly meeting awesome girls you connect with and constantly having awesome new experiences. Um, all right. But I remember I remember very specifically the, the first time I had my heart broken was like the first girl I got serious with. It was this blonde with big tits when I was in my last year of college and I finished Undergraduate was 17 lake count. I went into my third year of college with three lake count. I remember her name was Melissa. And I was tracking like every hookup at that time, like all makeouts, all non sex hookups. And she found like a printout where in the same I was I was like listing it by semester in college. And she saw herself, Melissa with another girl, Melissa in the same semester. But she was called blonde Melissa and she had an asterisk. And she's like, what's the asterisk? I'm like, that means we had sex. But she like freaked out and I like stopped formally tracking it in, in writing, but I still kept track of the lay count. Um, but it took me a very long time to get over that girl. It took me like six to nine months to get over that girl because we only we were only together like eight months. But the problem is I, I didn't know any any better at the time. I would still check her social media. And all that does is like keep you stuck not being able to get over the girl i would talk to mutual friends they're like oh she went out with this guy like guys that had been waiting she's pretty hot and like guys that had been waiting in the wings like different frat guys and like friends from classes and this and that like all tried to like move in on her like one and i broke up with her too i broke up with her because i moved away to grad school and i didn't want to do long distance but i would look at her social media and i would hear about her going on other dates with new guys and i still had feelings for her and that that fucking destroyed me for like six to nine months. But the advice that I give to guys that I've been giving for years 
is when you break up with a girl or when you part ways with a girl, um, you want to block everything and you want to stop checking their social media and any mutual friends that are telling you shit about the girl, tell them to stop. And if they continue, block them too. So you don't want to be thinking about her. And you can also make a list of the negatives, a comprehensive list of all the negative parts of the relationship and look at that when you feel weak and miss the girl and shit. Okay. Um, mystery, for those of you who read the book, The Game, had a fucked up childhood. Most of the greats in the game experienced some kind of trauma. Um, myself, Mystery, I think even Jeffy wrote in his book, I didn't read the book Nine Ball, but somebody told me that he he wrote about like his dad putting like a shotgun in his mom's vagina, which is pretty fucking hardcore. Um, you know, it's not normal to go fuck 1500 girls, right? So there has to be something that happens to you. You know, I'm, I'm very thankful for it. Like, like I've said this in other videos before, like, like George St. Pierre, like who's considered like the best pound for pound UFC fighter. He was bullied a lot as a child. There's something that has to happen usually for someone to achieve like an extreme level of greatness in a, in a skill game in a craft. Um, he was bullied to the point where he wanted to never be bullied again. Right. So he, he developed a skill set where he could kick anyone's ass basically. Um, with the game, like I endured a lot of verbal abuse as a kid. I was told like, I'll never be anything that I'll be nothing. Like when I excelled like very, very well in school, I'd get like, you know, like a 96, my mom would be like, why don't you get a hundred? Or I would get, you know, like I'd break records and, and like, different things in school and they'd be like why didn't you do better and it was always like that and it, and they're always you know they're good people with good hearts and stuff like that they're very religious and moral but it was like a very very hard childhood where i was like reduced to nothing and i was like suicidal and, and this and that and when you interact with chicks and you you can win over like hot females and bang them and, and have them like obsessed with you and shit like that that gives you dopamine hits but it also gives you like a, a feeling of you know external validation basically and you know guys like myself and like mystery we I, i'm not sure exactly the extent of what he went through but i could relate to certain scenes in the book the game i remember like neil strauss went over mystery's house at one point in the book the game and mystery was like <clears throat> all depressed and like in his room and like all this bullshit and he was like, let's go to the strip club. And he's like, no, like all the girls are flaking and blurring, you know, like girls falling off and which is, you know, like I said, you can never get away from that. You're going to lose awesome ones. You're going to make mistakes once in a while. Or they're going to, there's going to be shit that's out of your control and, and they're going to get back with exes or, or things come up in, in their, in their lives and stuff like that. But, you know, guys like him and me aren't, aren't normal people it was interesting i i <laughs> we're both very smart but you know we, we endured a bunch of trauma that um allowed us to take the game to this level but also you know can interfere i guess sometimes with with normal relationships um geez, these fucking girls even voice notes i, I absolutely hate voice notes even if I'm not busy, which, you know, a lot of times I'm with a girl or doing some kind of shit. I don't want to listen to the voice note, but it like derails anything that you're doing. You have to sit there and listen to that shit. Um, girls love leaving them in Brazil. I'm like, hey, don't leave voice notes. I'm on a call and I don't like them. And they're like, listen later when you can. It's like, great. Can't wait. Um, but I actually read Mystery just put out an email today on his newsletter that said in the beginning, like when he would... Uh, first go out to do cold approach he would just be terrified and he'd be like on the bus in toronto to go downtown and sometimes he would go out and like just be super scared and he'd want to talk to people and he wouldn't talk to anyone he'd go home i was the same way like i remember taking the the subway or taxi in philly and i'd have like my opener sheet my routine sheet and i would literally be trembling and i'd be like wanting to do anything else <laughs> other than 
talk to girls, but it is, you know, it is, it is a rewarding journey and it does open a lot of new doors for you when you can get past that and get to the other side. I think the game is one of the most rewarding things people can do in their lives to significantly upgrade their whole life overall. Um, I wish I should try to find some videos like myself in high school. I couldn't look people in the eye. When I got called on in class, I would turn bright red. I couldn't speak to any girls. I had a, I had a couple female friends that like full. Um, that had. That they were just like full friends on me, right? And I had a couple of situations with a couple of hot girls I liked where they asked me out. So we'd spend a bunch of time together. And I was like so nervous and had so much anxiety that I like made excuses like, no, I can't come. I can't go out with you. Um, even though I liked the girl, would like jerk off to her. <laughs> um, all right, let me keep moving along here. How not to pedestalize a woman even if she's a 10? That's a good question. You have to have a whole bunch of them. You have to have the skills to acquire new nine fives and tens at will. And you should be have you should be actively seeing a bunch of them on rotation. Right. So I just cut off a nine five. I just blocked a nine five a few weeks ago that had arguably one of the best assets I've ever seen in my whole life. And even I'm like a little shocked I did that. But but she was just annoying the fuck out of me. Right. She was texting me all the time getting mad if I didn't reply right away, sending naked videos all the time and all this shit and getting jealous because she found some girls hate, you know, just all just a bunch of annoying shit. I'd even bang her for a few months. So I, I like gave her a couple of warnings and then blocked her and I haven't unblocked her and I don't give a shit that much. We had another nine five that was part of a foursome with me, Liz, this 18 year old in, in the nine five. And she was being like rude during the foursome and like, kind of annoying i just kicked her out and she's like no one's ever like kicked me out of anywhere and like you know i won't speak to you again i don't give a shit get the fuck out, you know get the fuck out of here so if that's like your first time interacting with a 10 or getting a 10 you're never going to do that and i never would do that either like me and josh reminisce about those days i banged my first 10 at like 50 something late count in like 2009 and you let them get away with shit you're like intimidated by them um you know you see them as like some kind of perfection and and that's normal right because you're not used to that and you don't have access to that level yet and and most i would say all besides myself of these coaches on youtube do not have access to the highest level of girls because their their game is not good enough and they're not cool enough and they're just masquerading as, as some big player on YouTube for all of you guys. I'm posting a new receipt on YouTube every day on my YouTube stories. I'm going to do that for a year. I have terabytes of infield, countless clips of taking people home, taking girls home from start to finish. And we have over a thousand testimonials on a page of, of you know guys crushing. So the, the simple answer is you need to be able to regularly attract girls like that. And when you're seeing a bunch of nines, nine fives, and you can get more easily, then you don't need to put up with any kind of shit or give them special treatment, right? It's easier said than done. Be like, oh, okay, I'm not going to put her on a pedestal. But then you look at her and you're like, she's perfect. Uh, how can I not? Have five more. Okay, that's that's the solution. You need to develop your sexual market value, your game strategy and tactics, and the frames and, and ways that you carry yourself, your backbone, your the way you present yourself, the way you deal with situations, so that you can regularly attract them. That's the, that's the name of the game at every level. You have to be able to regularly attract sixes, then six fives, then sevens, then seven fives, then eights, then eight fives, and nines, nine fives, and tens. And that's when you've made it. That's when you've made it. Because you don't need a girl at that level. Like I've cut off a whole bunch. Like 
there's so many hot girls in Brazil. I've cut off, you know, fitness models. I've cut off like a beauty pageant winner. I cut off uh, this this chick with the perfect ass. I don't give a shit because I have a bunch of other really super hot ones. And but I was doing this in every country too for a long time. But in the earlier days. I was scared. I was intimidated. I would give them special treatment sometimes. And, and so, so does everyone else. Right. Um, no, I don't drink coffee every day. It's bad for your adrenals in general, but it's not that big of a deal. Uh, let's see. You talk a lot about having an eternal life on earth. Are you scared of death? Um, no, I'm not scared of death. I, there's a good quote by the ancient philosopher Epicurus who says, death does not concern me for when I am, death is not. And when death is, I am not. Which falls in line with my views from a neuroscientific and existential standpoint of Life after death, in my view, which I think is extremely well supported, will be the same as life before birth. I've tried to explain this to my dad, and he's, he's like perplexed. I'm like, Dad, in the year 1800, what was life like for you? Oh, uh, nothing. Okay. Were you, were you wishing you were alive yet? No. Were you sad you weren't alive yet? No. Will I be sad I'm not alive when I'm not alive? There's no me to be sad. I don't believe in a soul. Most of you watching probably believe in a soul. I remember my intro to philosophy class. <clears throat> the teacher was like, do you have a soul? And the guy's like, yeah. And he's like, how do you know? And he's like, well, I don't know. I, I just think I do. Because there's like this essence of a me. Okay. Does your dog have a soul? Uh, yes, is what the guy said. And he's like, what about a goldfish? Uh, no. Why not? Oh, well, a dog, you know, just shows emotion and, and smiles and this and that. Okay, so is the function of having a soul dependent? This is like when I started to fall in love with philosophy. This was like the best teacher I ever had, too. I still, I still meet this guy for lunch. And, and we like talk, you know, we, he's helped me work through some serious intellectual problems and stuff like that issues you know solving problems <clears throat> and he's like so you, so you think a soul is defined by the level of emotional abilities that an organism can display and he's like well you know and, and it starts to break down right like i i think it's it's impossible to be intellectually honest and believe in a soul once you study modern neuroscience i mentioned this in various videos that there's a book called The Synaptic Self by Joseph Ledoux, who's a researcher from NYU, that destroys the idea of a soul through, you know, pretty fucking hardcore. It shows that all we are is just our current synaptic configuration, which is defined constantly in flux by our environment and constrained by genetics. But if you were to have an accident and fuck with a certain part of your head or, or you had, you know, your brain opened up, your head opened up and they, they were tinkering with parts of your brain or you had Alzheimer's or this or that, you can go from theist to atheist. You can go from extroverted to introverted. You cannot remember anyone that you used to know, right? Like the only thing that's like tying this illusion of a self together is the long-term memory. Take that away. No more soul. And you can do philosophical thought experiments. Let's say that wherever you posit the inception of a soul entering the organism, let's say when the sperm hits the egg, when the zygote is formed, when the baby comes out of the vagina, whatever, it doesn't matter when. What if a thousand of those babies or zygotes died? What would differentiate them in heaven or hell or whatever kind of afterlife you believe in? And, and these things all fall apart when you study them anyways. We, we used to think that heaven was up because we didn't understand the solar system and we thought stars were pockets into heaven we used to think or we, you know people still do think heaven is down below or sorry hell is down below because we didn't understand magma and volcanoes and people that didn't know anything about science saw fire coming from below the ground 
now we have modern science with modern theories of evolution and and neuroscience and cognitive science there is no place for an afterlife there is no place for a soul there is no place for god it probably offends a bunch of you a lot of you and contradicts directly what you believe in but those are the facts so no i do not believe in an afterlife no i'm not scared to die because it doesn't make any logical sense right like people only think they'll regret not being alive once they're dead based on their conscious extrapolation into the future of thinking you know considering themselves being dead you're never going to be able to consider yourself not being alive because consciousness is only possible when you are alive so just like i wasn't wishing i was born in 1800 i won't wish i was still alive if and when i do die that being said if there's a way to put me on the cloud i'm all for that i, I was at a private party in hollywood hills in 2016 and i met this guy who was one of the smartest guys I ever met who was like a certified genius and he's like i only hire genius level iq people and he had a company that where they work on any problem in the world and it's just a team of geniuses literally not like you know the stupid apple geniuses which is a fucking dumb term but literal genius level iq people and he's like connected to this like network of billionaires and he's like you know what all the billionaires care about i'm like what getting hit by a, the getting hit by a bus scenario because yes we're going to solve aging soon yes we're going to solve disease soon but what happens if you get hit by a bus party party's over so there's like something called the 2045 society which is like a network of billionaires which are trying to solve the problem of, of uploading our consciousness to the cloud but you know that so that's what i'm ultimately hoping for <clears throat> um you know there, you can buy cryogenics policies and the technology is advancing to the point where they can unfreeze organs without damage but you know barring you know they can't they can't freeze you unless you're legally pronounced dead you know so there's a bunch of complications here but if you were to be if you were to be pronounced terminally ill, you can go to a company called Alcor, for instance. There's only two major ones in the U.S., A L C O R, and it's 80k to freeze just your brain. It's 200k to freeze your whole body, but you can use life insurance, and they they literally keep you frozen, and then your consciousness will pick back up once you're unfrozen. And the idea is that like nanobots or or some kind of future technology can repair whatever it was that was problematic with your body all that being said i want to live forever because uh you know we instinctually don't want to die if you do then why don't you kill yourself right now right that's kind of the argument aubrey de gray the longevity expert who wrote the book ending aging um which is pretty good says that he'd rather have the choice fully in his control other than you know um rather than have it become progressively removed as he gets older um so many fucking girls I, I already have like three interns helping me manage all this shit, but there, it's just like never ends, especially in Sao Paulo. There's 12 million people, 25 million metro, and it's unlimited online and, and cold approach opportunities. And we're scaling the company, and I live with my fucking chick and three dogs. I'm running a giant rotation. The, like, I literally have to cancel on like four or five girls a day, which is heartbreaking to say the least. Um, But yeah, if you guys didn't see my my singularity and, and longevity video, um, I 
we're we're right around the corner from there's already like and for those of you that are skeptical a lot of people are skeptical in that video oh i think you're too optimistic or you're you know your timelines are too aggressive no they're not there's a whole bunch of shit <clears throat> that already exists currently that already has made it through clinical trials that already is on the market that can make a significant 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 difference in reducing your risk for disease and, and your ability to, to live a long life and i'll be reporting much of that stuff on on youtube but check the book life force by tony robbins peter diamandis to learn about a lot of the advances all right let's keep going here um that's private but we do put quality above all else in the program so I'll, I'll say that so i work closely with every single guy and ensure that everyone's getting very good very fast but we do well like i said we're a multi seven figure company and i think next year we'll crack the eight figure mark which means we'll do over 10 million dollars this isn't all about money for me this is about helping as many guys as possible but the more people we help obviously the more we get paid but our team is expanding a great deal we've got a lot of people on the team now um let's see I wasn't aware that A.G. Hayden stole my method for a special online, but a lot of people ripped my shit. Stupid, fresh, and fit. Dumbass, number one and number two. Copied my terminology, my flowcharts, everything verbatim. Okay? Modern Life Dating. Ripped a bunch of innovations I made. A lot of people do that. Who gives a shit? The thing is, they don't understand it at the level that I do. They, they, haven't, they don't have 17,000 phone numbers in their phone. A.G. Hayden just hit 100 lay count. I did that over a decade ago. My depth and breadth of experience is light years beyond all these guys. So that's the one thing I take comfort in. Um, like I know the optimal response for every single game question there is. No one else can say that they, they know it for even like a small percentage. Uh, let's see. Not necessarily. But again, like, keep your first dates to drinks and coffee. You don't need to be doing other shit, regardless of how much money it costs. That's the best scenario is drinks or coffee. If she's pressing <clears throat> to do some kind of activity date or some kind of dinner thing, just say I prefer to do drinks or coffee on the first date and keep it light and casual. That's it. I'm actually busy with other guys. That means you're done with that one. You don't want to try to bang a girl that's seeing a bunch of guys. This girl's down to me. Awesome. Um, Without John's Lee's machine, I'd have zero dates scheduled. Yeah, I would say like 99.9% .9 of guys suck at texting. Even if you think you don't, you do. Okay, it's incredibly... There, there's so many ways you can fuck it up. There's so many pitfalls. Each back and forth, I've always said in a lot of videos, it's, it's like a battlefield. It's like a war. Each back and forth, she has the opportunity to stall you, aka not respond. When that happens... Now you are digging out of a hole for no reason. You are doing damage control for no reason. Your two choices are to double text, which I don't see a problem with. That's a whole other separate story. Um, I, there's tons of people that are anti-double or triple texting because they're retarded because <clears throat> they've been told something dogmatically and they don't understand the game anyways. Um, so if you think you should never double text, you are sorely mistaken. I double text all the time. If you don't double text, then you let the lead sit there and it's eroding meaning losing steam over time, and it's generally dead in a week. If you haven't built any investment yet, aka met up with the girl and 
the three major types of investment are temporal, spending time with her, emotional, her getting to know you and, and developing feelings for you, and physical, hooking up. Without any investment, if this is like a new lead from online or night or whatever, lead, you know, it doesn't matter the lead source. If it's a new lead and you haven't met up with her and you haven't banged her, you need to aggressively follow up so that you can get the date scheduled because the alternative is a stalemate that lets the lead die and you lose automatically. Um, but yeah, I built leads machine. I sat down in Warsaw, Poland after I had a thousand late count and I looked at what is the most important part of my system? What is the most important part of the game? What is the part that drives most of the results? And the answer is working the leads properly. Increasing your conversion rate to turn your phone numbers into dates. Why? Because I can get anyone getting a lot more numbers by increasing their cold approach skills and increasing their online game skills. I can get anyone getting a lot more closes once they have the dates set up, getting better at running the dates, getting better at closing the dates, and getting better at keeping the girls. So that middle part where you're converting your phone numbers into dates, that is the most important because the more dates you get set up, the more hookups and options for rotation you will have. So what I did was in Warsaw, Poland, after I had a thousand late count, I looked across tons of text threads and I already had mental heuristics, which means shortcuts for like the major types of situations. What do I open with that works the best? What do I do after the opener that works the best? What are all the areas of opposition, aka objections, comfort objections, safety objections, logistics objections, hookup objections, etc. And what are they? Right? And that's, this is kind of a high level overview. These are all the different types of things that, that you need to do over text. These are all the types of objections that come up. And there's full flows in here, and here, and here, and here. And for the confirmation, there's so much that goes into it. That's what I wrote here. Key to closing large quantities of high quality women is the lead working. No one talks about this. No one's fucking crushing the game. So you have to have all this down. And it's all handed to you on a silver platter. When you buy Lee's machine, which is on 50% off sale right now in the description, you get all the sequences. You're like, okay, this happened. What do I do in the chart? Okay, I type this. You don't need to freeform your own text. You, there's, it's not general guidelines or rules. It gives you the exact text verbatim. This happens, you do this. This happens, you do this. I was a systems engineer for five years working on nuclear missile defense, and I built these charts out. It's just a bunch of flow charts, complicated flow charts. So your online game messaging on Tinder and your uh, texting will be at my skill level out of the gate. Okay. All right. Let me try to bust through a whole bunch more questions here. What the fuck's the deal with this girl? Um, hold on one sec. Jesus Christ. WhatsApp web. Sec here. Um, yeah. Let's just rapid fire through a bunch of this shit. Um, cool, man. What's your what's your age and lake count? That's, that's what I always ask. What's your age and lake count? Um, regardless of, of what it is, we're going to, we're going to get you very good. Um, let me just rapid fire here. Cause there's a lot of questions in the chat. These are the wrong questions. You're, you're totally missing the fucking point. Irrelevant. Yeah. I mean, I don't know why you're thinking like this. That's, you know, it doesn't even, that's, that's just a dumb question. Um, just be the man. But again, like even, even being like a super confident alpha guy, they're not just gonna be like running out to buy you stuff. It's all right. If you're living with, <laughs> if you're living with parents and framing dates straight to the house, would you normally flag that with girls beforehand? Yes. 
you should say you're currently crashing with family while you look for an apartment. You're, you're in between apartments. Don't say that you're broke and can't afford an apartment. You don't want to DLV demonstrate lower value. Frame it in a way that is acceptable and not going to make you look like a loser. But yes, I do recommend prefacing that. But you can frame the date straight to her house, okay? which is what I actually advise clients that are living with their wives and going through a divorce or living with their parents or in school or whatever, just go to go to their fucking house. Everything's the same. Once you get her to agree to the day and time and get her to agree to coming straight to the house to split a bottle of wine or, or watch a show or do whatever, then you switch it at the last minute and you say, cool, normally I'd invite you over here, but I'm currently crashing with family looking for an apartment. I'm currently new back to the area, whatever it may be. Is it cool for me to your house? And then you answer objections there. If your parents are fine with you inviting girls straight to the house and, and it's not going to cock block the clothes, then there's no problem with that. But most people don't have that option that live at home. Um, all right. Uh, <clears throat> um, no, I do not think my life is perfect. I don't think anybody's life is perfect. Although it made me think of an idea that Nietzsche had. Nietzsche said that you should think, you should measure the quality of a day, of a, of a typical day in your life based on, is this a day I'd want to live an infinite number of times? If not, make the appropriate changes such that it is a day you'd want to live an infinite number of times. And that can be your guiding metric or set of metrics for how to change your life. Um, what's up? Just sold the company for 2.6 million euro since I can do what I want now. They should start focusing only on women. That's up to you. It's, I mean, I get tons of rich clients that have no clue how to get girls. Getting rich does not help you get girls, as I'm sure you figured out by now. And if you want to have high quality girls, yeah, that's one, it's one skill you need to learn. But I don't know if it needs to be your primary focus or only focus. That's your own personal choice. But email me. I can tell you what, what we can do for you in the girl department. Email me at john at Um, All right. My ideal type in a girl physically is really pretty face, flat stomach, fake tits, nice juicy ass, tattoos and piercings, and... Yeah, that probably pretty much does it. I like stacked up bodies with, with really pretty face. I'm pretty, pretty sure everyone does. But I don't only like girls with fake tits and big asses. There's all types of girls that I like that are hot. Dude. Don't ask this question fucking a hundred times for everybody. Don't type the same question over and over and over and over and over. Jesus. Get on a call to, to go over. I'm not even sure what the team is doing in those cases for that, but just get on a call. Um, yeah, you can increase your age on the apps if you want to date older, but just tell the girls like, that you normally date girls their age or older. Oh, fuck. I forgot to respond to this bitch. Huge titties. Awesome. It's like fun. All right. Um, All right, let's keep going through here. Try to rapid fire. Yeah, I, th I think most people are not uh, working anywhere near to their potential. Not even close. Sounds 
So push yourself more. For all the flack that Elon Musk is getting right now over his Twitter decisions, keep in mind he's the CEO of Tesla, of SpaceX. He's developing the, th the thing called Neuralink, which can interface the brain with the computer, the bandwidth problem. He's working on open AI to make AI safe. He's trying to colonize life on Mars. He's He co-founded PayPal. A lot of people don't know, don't know that. Uh, he's solving the traffic problem in LA. Like, you know, this is a lot of... Um, this is, you know, no one's doing anything close to that, most people. So I think we could all be doing a lot more. And if you're 18, I think you should dream big and, and make shit happen and then make more shit happen. I think most people are living mediocre, boring lives. I'm just fucking arranging this date here. All right. Up to 1,565. This will be 566. Um, the fine line between spam approaching and going to the next set. Okay. RST was giving you no strategy or very shitty strategy or very little strategy. You don't want to go in. You don't want to just be an approach machine, just approaching for the sake of approaching and blow out the whole venue, right? That there's no merit in that. Instead, you want to approach with optimal strategy and optimal mindset. And then when you do run into a girl that's taken or not in the mood or not interested for whatever reason, you move on to the next one and don't let it register. If you were cold calling on the phones and sales or cold knocking doors, and some person, whoever it was, was not interested or told you to fuck off, that shouldn't make you feel like shit. Can you understand that? I mean, it, you know, it might, in the moment, it, it probably would, right? But from the outside, you can see that if a brand new sales newbie knocked on that door of the guy who was in a shitty mood, or the best salesman in the world knocked on that door, they're most likely going to both get told to fuck off. Now, the veteran is going to know that's just part of the game and not take it personally and just see that as a house that's not down to buy. The newbie will take it personally and think that he sucks and maybe yell something back at the guy and it will put him on tilt, which is a poker term, and he will start either trying to get revenge with the next doors or, he, or he'll be trying extra hard to make a sale because he's emotionally involved at this point, both of which are bad options. Okay, so the difference is having a strategy and going in with the, the fundamentals versus just, just approaching like a fucking maniac with little to no strategy um, for the sake of approaching on its own. RSD misled everyone with the idea that taking massive action is a good thing inherently, which it is not, and it'll eventually lead to mastery, which it won't. Okay, think of any game chess let's use chess or poker for example which are two skill games if you were to just sit down and play a lot of chess you're not guaranteed to get better you're not guaranteed to get significantly better you could get worse and the same with poker okay like like there's no merit in just playing a skill game a lot rsd was telling you there was but let's take let's just let's let's play that out for a second a lot of you went and did this let's say that you go in and you're just spam approaching the whole venue and you blow the whole venue out and you don't get any numbers and you don't get late what did you learn there how do you feel are you ready to go do that again the rest of the week every night what you're doing is ingraining bad behaviors what you're doing is probably making yourself more weird because you're doing shit that doesn't work that they, you know based on their on their dumb videos and in in the process of doing so you're deflating your confidence you're not seeing a return on your investment 
and you're getting frustrated. And there's only so many times you can do that before you're going to give up. And who's waiting in the wings? Other shithead companies that have other shithead promises that are going to also fail you. Who else is waiting in the wings? Black pill. Hey, man, you ready to give up on the game? You want to blame your looks now? Who else is waiting in the, in the wings? Red pill. Hey, are you ready to give up on all these thoughts, all these shitty girls who are just out to fuck you over? Come join our movement and we can all hate women together. Dumb. Or MGTOW, which is one of the worst. Okay, I'm just going to give up on dating forever. I'm just going to live my life void of women because I just wasn't meant to date. No. What you did, okay, you, your heart was in the right place. <clears throat> you were ready to put forth the time and the effort and to endure the negativity of, of relentless rejections. But you missed one important component. Okay, first of all, you trusted a cult leader named Tyler Durden, RST Tyler, Owen Cook, who told you that massive action is the answer just take massive action bro and he told you that in a thousand videos and people believed him so they took to the streets in mass and i cannot count the number of times countless times that a guy has come to me and he's been trying pick up for years years with significant amounts of time effort and usually money sometimes over 10 years now, do you see why I, I fucking go at the throats of so many people? And they didn't get better, okay? And then I get them late on night one of a boot camp, or I get their schedules packed up by week two of the eight-week program. What changed? What was the determining factor? I finally gave them an optimal strategy, okay? And then I'll bring them on my channel and people will say, well, wait a second, how tall is that guy? Oh, he's 6'2". Oh, well, that's why he got laid eight times in your program. No, for those 10 years where he didn't get laid at all, where he was doing cold approach tons of nights, where he was using Tinder <clears throat> a fuck ton of time, where he paid all these coaches, all that stuff. Hey, guess what? He was 6'2 then as well. Got any more excuses? Oh, well, what city was he in? Uh, well, how was he dressing? Shut the fuck up. Okay, that's the answer. Shut the fuck up. If it's not obvious from the, the thousand examples we have on a page that this is a skill and strategy game and that you don't need to do a thousand nights out or a thousand approaches, I can get any one of you watching laid tonight with high chance. That's why we started doing those challenges. Come on for 27 bucks, spend a weekend where I train you up in cold approach and watch yourself pull from the club when you never thought it was possible. Let me show you guys something. Um, <laughs> look, these are the pictures that I sent to girls. I send these same four pictures over online game most every time. This just shows in good shape. This is in Italy. And this is a good physique pick. Countless people still call me fat online, which is kind of funny. Um, and she said, oh, my God, you're so hot. In Portuguese, oh, my God, you're so hot. I want you for myself. Um, But wait a second, we waffles called me a two. Some new guy raided my face now. We waffles can't even count the number of girls he's banged on this many fingers. Meanwhile, each of these D's represents 500 women that I closed. Tell me more how I look like shit. <laughs> All right. Um, oh, what was I going to show? Oh, New York City boot camp last night. This is this program is going on currently. I just gotta block these names real quick. Hold on a sec. Just for confidentiality. Um 
Most girls won't come straight to the house. I had to do coffee dates. They're more conservative than the U.S. Um, it's harder than the U.S. Hold on a sec here. Okay. I'm just getting rid of these people's fucking names. All right, so check this out. <clears throat> this is from the New York City boot camp currently going on. This will go on our testimonials page. Here's the guy with a blonde. Pat's first cold approach lay. My man got a lady, still has a serious face. Uh, and he's like, dude, I was so tired. I had a hard time getting it up. First night of the program. I cannot count how many times we've done that. In 2012, I've told this, I'll tell this real quick story and we'll go and move on with the questions. In 2012, I only taught like three programs for RSD, but I was teaching one of the programs in October 2012 with Jeffy. There was two students, one from Australia and the other one actually happened to be Chris Parker. Jeffy later became Chris Parker. Um, Jeffy got went with the Chris Parker dude, who sucked shit, by the way, before he ripped my product years later. And I had the Australian dude. The Australian dude was at four lay count and got him laid night one for the first time ever pulling from cold approach. Got him laid night two, second night ever. But this was 10 years ago, okay, 2012. You see now why I rail on fucking little kids in the space that are at 40 lay count and, and acting like the man on YouTube and telling everyone how they how I'm such a scammer based on nothing. And he, the only reason he didn't get late night three is because I pulled and left. Um, but I was just an assistant, and I had the right to do that. And and Jeffy kept him on a set where he the girl had a boyfriend, and he, he just wasted like an hour and a half. But anyways, he increased his late count 50%. And I've been doing that time and time and time and time again. And now my coaches are doing that. I'm not, I'm not running this New York City program. I'm in Brazil. And the guy got late night one. We, we had a, a program last year where there was – eight students, three instructors of mine, because we always do three to one ratio. We, we adhere to that strictly. We don't ever even run programs over six most of the time. But in this eight student program, seven people pulled out of the eight students one of the nights. Seven people out of eight, and I wasn't there as a coach. And a lot of those people had been spam approaching for years and never got laid once. Never. What's the difference? Is, are we doing some kind of magic trick? No, we're teaching you how to actually do game, which is sad, very, very, very sadly, like a forgotten art, like a forgotten skill. When I read Mystery Method and didn't know anyone in the community or anyone doing game, I thought that there would be a global network of killers that were fucking crushing the game and that we all ha secretly had this advantage because of this book. That's how I was in the poker circuit. Like I read, I just fucking combed through all the advanced poker books and I was crushing all the games and crushing all the tournaments, getting first place, second, third, all the time. And then as poker became more popular and the books got more popular, the game started to get tougher because more people were getting up on the strategy. And when I got into the pickup world, I thought it would be the same thing. Come to find out, not only does the whole community suck shit, let's be honest, but they usually suck more shit than the average guy. How can that be the case? They're devoting time, effort, and money. It's because of the amount of misinformation, the amount of misleading going on, the amount of fake guruism that allows any dumb fuck with a webcam in, in a mouth to go proclaim that he's the next big thing in the game. And that's why I've made hundreds of videos calling them all out one by one. All right, enough about that. I don't know. I've never been to Vietnam. Don't know much about it. Um, I use Phenobut when I do night game cold approach. I take rhodiola daily just to help attenuate the physical and emotional stress levels. Kava once in a while, but not that often.
Uh, yes, I have. Him, him and I have a lot in common. I'm actually a big fan of his. No, of course not. The amount of pain and misery. its He's one of the people I hate the most in the world by far. The amount of pain and misery and suffering he's caused that I've had direct firsthand access to. He's really fucked up the lives of most clients I've had over the past 10 years. And again, like this industry is a special industry and not in a good way because it is very easy to come into this industry and be a fraud. It is very easy to come to this industry and talk out of your ass and extract money from people while pretending to be their friend. RST Tyler has always been and will always be a wolf in sheep's clothing. He pretends to be your friend. He pretends to be on your side and he demonizes anyone that's you know not with his teachings as a chode or a beta. Just like Rolo demonizes people as a blue-pilled beta simp, the and Andrew Tate demonizes people as a brokey or a normie. These are just cult tactics. Okay, RST Tyler is nothing more than a cult leader and a good marketer. Nothing more. And a huge fucking liar. He is not on your side. 70 products. Use your fucking brain. You only need one. I built Occam's Razor to be the be-all, end-all. I only came on with a second product to really take the lead stuff, lead working to the extreme. Those are my only two products. The A-Week program ties it all together and you have all the um, the live coaching calls to, to make it significantly more valuable. But I, I will never make 70 products. I don't even know how I would do that. Like even being creative, I can't make more products. I, I was thinking about maybe making one about how to generate a rotation in one to two months and you know more, more focused on the retention stuff. But... Um, no, I, I don't want to make peace with this guy. He knowingly fucked over countless people and continues to do so. Yes, he does seem like a good guy. No, he is not a good guy at all. Uh, yeah, her family loves me and they, and they still do. And they know about my job. <laughs> her brother, he's like 23 now, but when I, when I met him, he was like 21. And he would come over to the, the two-story penthouse we had in Florianopolis. I think Liz was on an engineering work trip at one point. And he came to hang out with me. And there was like 10 girls over. We went out to a club. It was like me and 10 hot girls that I was banging and him. And he just like drank and partied with us. And we got back to the house. And there was like girls naked going up on the stripper pole. And like I was going to the bedroom with like two or three of them at a time. He was like fist bumping me. It was cool. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm like serious seriously dating his sister um but yeah her, her family is super good people super nice uh sao paulo is one of the biggest cities in the world i just moved here in may i was in florianopolis two years but it's only 500k it gets up to about a million <clears throat> in high season in the summer but Sao Paulo is um, 12 million people 25 million metro I generally not burn out but I generally do about a year and a half in a city and bang about 200 girls is what I find a city of about a million people all right. Um, Michelle Thomas, German linguist, M-I-C-H-E-L, got conversational in Spanish in five hours versus having taken Spanish for four years in school and not being able to speak it when I moved to Puerto Rico in 2016. But after five hours of the Michelle Thomas course, I was able to have a three hour date with no Google translate and understood people's phone conversations when I was walking around. That's how I learned Russian, Polish, uh, Portuguese, and Spanish. And that's how I would learn another language if I needed to quickly. I learned Russian on the plane ride over to Ukraine. 
Uh, generally, yes. Top neuroscience books. Yes, yeah, Synaptic Self by Joseph Ledoux. Emotional Brain by Joseph Ledoux. A Universe of Consciousness by Edelman. The Blank Slate, Modern Denial of Human Nature by Steven Pinker, cognitive neuroscientist from Harvard. Um, How to Build a Mind by Ray Kurzweil. Mm, there's a bunch. I, I have a whole fuck ton of them. But those are some of my favorites. She wasn't bad. I've never read any of her books in full. Like Atlas Shrugged and stuff like that, but she's pretty good. Um, the philosophers that influenced me the most, Frederick Nietzsche, um, John Locke, David Hume, the empiricist, but also people like Bertrand Russell. Um, I love philosophy. It's, it's probably my favorite thing. But yeah, a lot, of, a lot of the German existentialists, Nietzsche, Kierkegaard. And, you know, people like Nick Bostrom in the modern day for existential risk. Very nervous and scared before the approach. It was interesting today and, and also very honest of mystery in, in his email that came out today. He said he still gets scared before he goes and talks to a group of hot girls. I do too. And that's biological and automatic. And it doesn't really go away. I could silence it before with alcohol. But it's an automatic response. <clears throat> For those of you that saw my singularity video, I talked about how when inputs come into our senses through the external environment and there's automatic unconscious calculations computed, and then they've literally measured the signals go out to your limbs to move, to your vocal cords to speak, to your emotional systems to feel. And then your consciousness is informed. I, I can't stress this enough. This is an important point. Your consciousness is literally informed after the results of unconscious automatic calculations, mathematical calculations in your brain based on the current synaptic wirings. It literally is a mathematical calculation. And that defines what you think, do, say, and feel. And then your consciousness is informed about it. It does not have a part in it. And then you backwards rationalize. So for instance, <clears throat> let's say you had a stressful day at work. Let's say you have kids. Let's say that you get home and your kid does something that otherwise would have been not a big deal, but you snap at the kid and you blame the kid. Really, your system was just put on high alert due to the stress levels of something that happened earlier, but you're not fully taking into account the total cause of the scenario because you are a limited human and you're just using rationalizations. But there is a deterministic total cause that made you act that way and it couldn't have been done any other way. So um when you, my point of taking that little detour explanation is that you will feel this like <gasps> adrenaline is getting pumped. Your fight or flight response has now been activated just from seeing the girl. And mystery's explanation from an evolutionary uh, biology standpoint is that when we were in small tribes, if you were to approach a woman that was taken, you could be killed. Or if you're rejected, you may never reproduce. I believe that, although I don't know for sure how accurate that is, but you're still feeling that feeling automatically so you have to as mystery says treat it like a pebble in your shoe it's there you acknowledge it but you ignore it you follow the three second rule so that you don't become paralyzed by the list of negative outcomes that you start imagining and by standing there and thinking what if she doesn't like me what if i get rejected what if she insults me what if her friends laugh at me what if other people over here what if she has a boyfriend what if i'm not her type what if she goes away and i look stupid all that is solved by hoping for the best, being armed in advance with a proper strategy and having done this lots of times, knowing that it will work out. Even if it's your first time doing it, building off 15 years of me doing it, 
tens of thousands of times and being a hyper analytical optimizer and giving you a game plan in advance and then hoping for the best. And then you start to get some reinforcement when it does work out well and it encourages you to do it again. Um, okay. So yeah, this is a normal feeling and you have to ignore it and, and go in within three seconds. And also assume it's going to go well. Nice. Um, they've done studies that girls see guys with tattoos as like more confident, more sexy, more dominant, like a whole bunch of good things, but they see them as like worse partners, like, like you'd make a worse boyfriend. And I was like, perfect. It describes me exactly. But, you know, in all seriousness, I didn't even get mostly tattoos until the past year or two. I was already at like 1300 lay count. I don't think it makes any significant difference either way. That being said, I'm about to get more on my chest in like 10 days. But I do get complimented on them a lot. A lot of chicks like them a lot. Um, if you're reusing photos from account to account, the best practice is to take a screenshot of the photo so that it erases the metadata that was there before, which the program can detect. And then, yes, adjust the contrast by one or two so that it's a different photo hashed. Uh, variety. Some have big tits, some have big ass, some have tiny waist, small frame. They all suck dick differently. They all bang differently. They all have different personalities. It's like a conglomerate super girlfriend kind of thing where they, none of it gets old because there's so much variety. So five isn't enough. Yes, you don't have to pay taxes in two countries if you live in another country and are a U.S. citizen. Yes, it's super effective. Um, at first, it's it, so like Kurzweil talks about like the nature of technological advancements. Like, look when cell phones first came out, or t big screen TVs, or any of these things. At first, the technology works poorly and it's very expensive, only accessible to the wealthy. Then it improves and becomes affordable by anyone. And that happens pretty quickly. So, you know, but things like cryogenics, right? Like 200K for the whole body. And I think you do need to freeze the whole body, not just the brain for 80K because of the connections between the brain and the body being so essential. There are certain things where literally you could save the life of yourself or your loved ones with the right price tag. And there's a lot of cutting edge stuff that I do for myself and my loved ones that does cost a lot of money. So make more money. It's <laughs> a pretty heavy question. I would say become the, the leading dating company by popularity and revenue. Um, become the biggest lifestyle company because we're not just a dating company anymore. The, the parent company of Optimized Lifestyle. We have a fitness branch, a fashion branch. We're bringing in a Transition to relationships or marriage branch with Paul Jenka. We're bringing in a uh, healing traumas branch with Ross Jeffries and health and longevity branch most likely as well. But I'd really like to see how far we can take all that. Um, 
I'd like to travel. I'm, I've already traveled around around the whole world, but I'd like to travel a lot more. And I'd really like to, you know, get my my loved ones in a, in a position to minimize disease and aging as, as much as possible, which is always an ongoing process. Yeah, I'd have to think about that a little more, but those are some of the main ones. I tell guys to about a half hour total across all the apps. Yes, you don't want to swipe right on everyone. It shows you have no standards. No, I have a straightforward process. If they ignore, I deal with that in turn. You can boost when your lead pool is low. Boost and, and super like as much as you can afford. And those are going to give you a significant advantage. Um, you don't need to change your IP address. You just need different phone number and email. Good question. Um, I found that female attraction lenses are like fairly lining up, meaning like even girls are like a six or seven fall in line mostly with what the hot girls think, but I still prefer to have hot girls do the ratings because they're more picky and you want to be able to compete for the hottest girls. And if you can win over the hottest girls, you're going to be able to get the rest of them too. Um, email support at johnanthonylifestyle.com if you didn't get a response. I mean, soccer, you know, soccer, football is a skill game. That's why, like, people that don't understand that poker is a skill game and they think it's mostly luck or, or gambling or whatever because they don't understand the game. Um, if you watch the movie Rounders with Matt Damon, when the girl's like, oh, so you're off gambling again? Like, his girlfriend doesn't understand. And he's like, why do the same people make it to the final table of the World Series of Poker every year? Are they the luckiest people in the world? It's a skill game, Joe. And it's like, that's why I can keep banging 100 to 150 girls a year. That's why guys pack their schedules full of dates by week two when they come to the program, why they pull on our boot camps consistently. Not every time, but a lot of times. It's a skill game. When you do optimal moves, you increase your chances and probabilities for results. <laughs> Do you ever get depressed? I used to when I when I first kind of hit nihilism and, and realized that life is all pointless and stuff like that. That was very depressing. But I feel like that's like a rite of passage. Elon Musk talks about how he had to go through that. Most smart people I met had to go through that. My brother's going through it currently. Um, nihilism and, 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 you know, existential despair and angst doesn't need to be defeatist. You can turn it into an empowerment model utilizing Nietzsche's concept of the Ubermensch and the Overman and creating your own values and purpose and meaning. Um, women can bring a lot of happiness, but there's a lot of downsides as well. So in a way, like they can become addicting, right? Like, like I'm definitely like addicted to the game, addicted to chicks. Like and in a way, it's like, you know, you get dopamine eyes from, from winning over the girls, from closing, you know, this and that. Um, I think about that sometimes. But you should try to focus on, for, for like lasting happiness, you should try to think on things, try to focus on things that have, that are like non-contingent. Meaning, like in philosophy club, they talked about like, you know, the love of your family and like different things or skills you possess there's like certain things 
that you can do or accomplish or that you can be aware of about yourself and this and that, that aren't contingent upon other things, external factors. And so that's like a, a glass filled with water. Like think about a glass filled with water and that represents your happiness. Like you can fill that up and you can be content because it's not contingent upon other things. Things like dealing with people and like women and stuff like that or just hedonistic pursuits in general, you know, drinking, sex, drug use, whatever it may be. It's like pouring water into a cracked glass. So you pour it in, the water comes out, and then you're like, okay, where's the next girl? Where's the next drink? Where's the next party? Right? And it's almost like a vampiric bloodlust in a way, especially as you get better at it, because then you can procure the result faster and more often. And, you know, I, I, I lived a lot of years like that, that where it's, you're just constantly trying to pour water into the cracked glass and you can keep the water being poured in at all times. And arguably the glass can be fuller than when you're not engaging in those things. But, you know, these are philosophical questions regarding to like hedonism and the point of life and all that stuff. So you have to sort some of that out for yourself. You shouldn't just listen to my take on this. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's one of the worst. Yeah. Um, I've thought about that a lot and, and I'm working with some stuff on some stuff with some guys. Um, the best poker books, I mean, I, I read all the poker books that I read in like 2001, 2002, 2003. I read a lot of like David Sklansky, um, Phil Helmuth. What else? I read a lot of like No Limit, Hold'em Strat or tournament, tournament books. Um, but yeah, I, w I wouldn't take any of those book recommendations because there's a lot, the, the game's evolved and there's better ones out now. But I've been out of the poker circuit for a bit, so I, I really couldn't tell you. But you just want to basically learn from the best guys. It's like any fucking any fucking game. There, there, actually, there's one I, that I will recommend. I think this was either Howard Letter or his sister, Annie. Um, Zen in the Art of Poker teaches you how to like not go on tilt which is very applicable to the game when you hit a rejection or a negative reaction as well so, oh no it's larry phillips i guess but this was pretty good this is about like how to keep your emotional composure it's it's like he basically makes the point that, like you shouldn't play you should play every hand based on like the technical merits regardless of how you're feeling emotionally you shouldn't like quit a session just because you're up a bunch of money or you shouldn't. Um, it, it's like all one long game you're, you should, is how you should look at it. So like every every hand and interaction is like in a vacuum and same in, same in game that applied directly to game for me it was very uh, useful to think of game that way. But for instance, like let's say that you take a bad beat. Like let's say that you have like 90% chance to win a hand and you have most of your chips in or all your chips in and somebody hits their 10%. That will like throw a lot of guys off. They'll get upset. They'll get angry. They'll get frustrated. And that will influence them to play future hands incorrectly because they're what's they're playing what's called on tilt. I used to, in Atlantic City, I used to put guys on tilt on purpose. I would like look for guys that were kind of like wild cannons, you know, like loose cannons or played sporadically, played too many hands, overextended themselves. And I would play a really big bluff on them and push them. Like I'd see like where I could break them, you know, based on their behavior. And I would just put a big bluff on them and push them out of a hand with a big enough bet. And then I would show my cards and I would taunt them. <laughs> and I was usually hammered. But like, this was actually a really good strategy. So, so I'd like taunt them. I'd be like, hey, what happened there? And they'd be like, what'd you say? I'd be like, what happened there? And they would get super angry. And then I would get them isolated in a pot against me. Like I would like raise to get them heads up, you know, one-on-one. -on -one. 
and I'd wait until I had like a really good hand and I'd play it the exact same and then bust their whole stack of chips. And it was basically exploiting people's emotion. I had one dude, like, he was like, I'm going to wait for you on the parking lot. And I was like, uh, dealer, is he allowed to speak to me like that? And they like had security rush the guy and like fucking escort him out. Almost, yeah. I, I, I've, I've been in almost like a million close fights. I've been in a bunch of real fights too, but I used to just shit talk everyone. I guess I still do that to some extent on, on YouTube. But, you know, it was hilarious. But most people are going to like be influenced by their emotions. But the same thing happens. And RST was encouraging you to go down this incorrect tilt state by telling you that you'd have state crashes. Oh, you hit a big rejection or a negative outcome state crash. No, bullshit, incorrect theory and strategy. You want to be resilient. And if you hit five or six rejections in a row, still bring your A game on that seventh girl because maybe she's going to be into you and you make the difference between taking her home or not. I've had situations like that where I've had a string of blowouts and most people would be like, oh my God, I suck. Uh, like, let's get a seventh blowout. You know, this is not my night tonight and all this stupid shit like that. I'd be like, doesn't matter. You're still a fucking animal in the game. You just fucked 10 hot girls last month. Right? And then you bring your A game and lo and behold, actually, I'm going to make a video soon. <clears throat> As a side note, um, I'm going to make a video soon about people's mental attitude in the game. Like this dude texted me last night and he's like, yeah, I never get any numbers or good reactions in game. And I think it's because of my height. And last night I wore platform shoes and, and I had a bunch of girls interested in me and I got a bunch of numbers. And I got a make out. Therefore, like the height factor is very real and, and one of the most important things. I said, no, you just had confidence finally because you thought the shoes helped. And I know, and he's like, well, that's just your opinion. I'm like, no, it's not. Like, I have endless amounts of data on this over 10 years of coaching tens of thousands of guys around the world. You thought you, you, thought you were the man and you're finally good enough because you had these dumb shoes. So you carried yourself differently. It was placebo. And a lot of people don't understand that. And it comes in all shapes and sizes. Oh, my hairline, my, my height, my age, my ethnicity, my... Uh, my physique, my style, uh, get rid of all that, get a good strategy and a good mindset and watch how things change. Um, we discontinued corner pickup. Uh, we're going to re-release it under a different name. We like, as you can imagine, like different platforms had problems with that name. I got like my, my PayPal's banned over that. Um, for having a, a product about how to bang girls during the pandemic. But that product was really devoted towards like taking the online part of the game to the extreme because cold approach was dead during the large part of COVID because clubs were closed <clears throat> and people weren't really out in public very much. Um, This girl seeing if she can come or not. Um, I think philosophy is the most important degree. It's, it doesn't have much utility towards capitalism directly but it teaches you how to critically think, how to examine issues from all different sides, how to think for yourself, how to break free of social conventions, um, how to use deductive logic and empirical evidence. Like if you look at statistically who performs the best on like the GRE, the graduate record exam, which is the exam you take before going to graduate school in the US, it's physics majors and philosophy majors. If you look at the LSAT, the law exam to get into, into schools, it's physics and philosophy. Philosophy majors even score higher on the, the graduate business exam than business majors. So I remember when I switched, or, or I should say added in philosophy because I kept my computer science major. My mom said, uh, philosophy is just for deadbeats that couldn't make it anywhere else. And actually, 
the truth is quite the contrary. Uh, most philosophy professors that I met gave up careers that would have been much more profitable in engineering or computer science or such things the natural sciences to go teach philosophy and make a much less but you know there's not everyone judges the utility of a discipline based on how much of the imaginary concept of you know money that it brings in i never have given a shit about money ever my whole my whole life I always thought it was absolutely retarded. I've always done everything I've wanted to do, you know, within reason at all times. And if I couldn't afford it, I, I found a way to afford it. Which back in the day involved taking out loans or credit cards or borrowing money from people. And, it, you know, for the past bunch of years, I've, I've had plenty of money. But my life hasn't changed that much because I still do what I what I always want to do at all times, which is what I've always done. Um, I think religion gives people hope. I I would love to believe. I just can't. Like I I know too much. <laughs> it's like once you study enough science and other intellectual areas it's like nearly impossible to believe in god but i wish i could believe in heaven i mean that that would be nice it's also good at controlling people you know it, it depends on what we're defining as a positive but it's good to kind of control the herd i guess if that's a positive Um, yeah, I, I used to have my own pickup forum. We had like a, a full set of forums back in the day and like in 2013, 2014, but then, um, and then I, I kind of moved my forums to the Facebook groups and then RST got my groups removed and I was like, this is fucking stupid, but yeah, maybe I could talk to the team about maybe making a Discord group. All right. Uh, let's keep going here. Yeah, I mean, those interviews were arguably fairly good but as i found out more and more about those guys i do not like them nor do i support what they're doing there's a ton of shady shit behind the scenes that i was not at liberty to even talk about on youtube and you know there's all kinds of shady stuff yeah that's that's enough there Let's see. Get on a call. We have multiple options. There's all there's all kinds of different. It's it's several thousand dollars. Is, it should be expected, but um, based on the if you're getting content only, adding in the calls, adding in fitness, adding in fashion. There's combos with the boot camp. Just book a call. It'll be 30 minutes of your time or less to go over all the details. Um, I've been training Muay Thai since 2016. I've trained under some of the best Muay Thai people in the world. And I've trained under a ex- Polish Special Forces guy in Krav Maga. I've trained under uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belts in Brazil for a while. Like when the pandemic first started, I was doing five days a week of Muay Thai one on one, hour break, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu one on one every day. And so I'm pretty good at, at both those. Um, 
I've been. Let's see. Like four, like, like four real fights. Um, the thing is though, like, you don't know, like, you don't, you still don't want to fuck with people, even even if you can fight really well. Like, in Puerto Rico, I, I, the guy I was training Muay Thai with, this Mexican dude, um, we were out at a bar, and a, a guy got in my face, and he had like three friends, and I was like, let's just fuck, let's just fucking fight him, like two on four, and um. That would have been a bad idea because a lot of people have guns in Puerto Rico and stuff like that. You know, it's the the thing is, is like you could like with the stuff with with Krav Maga, especially like like you can like really hurt somebody. You can get in trouble for that. You can have them want revenge on you and and start a vendetta against you. They can they can have weapons. There's friends that can come after you. You know, there's you just you just gotta be careful. So I don't go looking for fights, but I can defend myself if I, oh, and I did boxing training for a while as well. But I would say like the best training styles or, you know, if people are interested in doing martial arts for, for defense or being able to hold themselves in a fight. Um, boxing and wrestling. I mean, if you look at any like MMA, it, it's like Muay Thai is the best stand up fighting style and uh, jiu jitsu is the best ground style, right? And then there's like some good stuff in judo and, and samba. Krav Maga is just all about like neutralizing the threat as quickly as possible with like no rules. So I still think Krav Maga is the best. Like on day one, they're like, here's how you incapacitate someone in like five different ways. So, but like, like I said, you can get in trouble for some of that stuff. <laughs> so, yeah. But everybody's like a big tough guy, like especially on the internet, right? I've challenged multiple people to a fight and everyone, no one ever accepts. Like in a ring and, and outside of a ring challenged and no one ever accepts. Um, Potentially, I mean, this is an official public notice, like, I, like some of you know that I, I was sued for $6 million by Derek Moneyberg and that case is still ongoing. Spencer Cornelia was sued separately for the same types of alleged defamation and our cases just got combined. So me and Spencer are in the same case together uh, versus, versus Derek. Um, but, you know, that's all I'll say about that for now. Um, how can you say it? Let's see how many fucking more. T okay, cool. I'm almost to the bottom. I'm almost through all the questions. So, and for those of you that came late or that are here, please press the like button. And we have we have the 50% off Occam's Razor and Leeds machine in the description as our sale here. Um, yeah, that's another thing. You don't want to fucking fight in foreign countries because you can get in trouble. You can get in even more trouble. Uh, let's see. My firm goal, and this is me being 100% honest, in high school was to live in a trailer. And my mother was like horrified. She's like, What will we tell the, the relatives? I'm like, I don't give a fuck what you tell the relatives. The whole idea there was to have minimal upkeep and not be a slave to my possessions. Like I didn't want to be paying off a car and a mortgage and cleaning a big property and you know, it's all this stupid shit. Like in a trailer, I would have had all the basic amenities. Like I wrote a whole paper on this. <laughs> it's basically um at the time, like the statistics at that time, it was like only eight percent of the people in the world had a bank account. A third of the people were dying of famine. This was like 20 years ago. A third. Of the people in the world were dying of famine and if you like own a bank account you're like part of the eight percent wealthiest people in the world so if you look at like trailer life it's like pretty glamorous compared to the rest of the world and 
then you don't need to have a job. So the goal is always not to have a job because in a way you're like an indentured servant and there's some like parallels to like jail. Like you have to be there at a certain time and you cannot leave. If you do, you'll be fired. So I never ever liked the idea of being stuck in a place from some set time to another set time, not being able to leave. That always bothered me. But I got away from that almost 10 years ago. <clears throat> But yeah, I've, I've been living, you know, I've I've always driven sports cars. I've always lived in mansions and penthouses. I've always traveled and, and gone out to luxurious dinners and, and this and that. And I, you know, I started at 64K. I've been transparent about this. I started at 64K in 2007 with Lockheed Martin. Over four and a half years of getting the optimal raises that you could, I was up to 86K. IBM came in and offered to pay me 120K to work from home, 100% from home. So I quit Lockheed, worked for IBM. And then Sony and HP gave me like, one was like 110, one was like 105. After tax, you, know, you lose about a third of that. <clears throat> and then, you know, that I made a lot of money with poker and stocks and, and stuff like that, but in, in my pickup business doing multiple seven figures. Um, but that wasn't the case until the past couple of years. So, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I still don't care about money. It, for me, it's just about freedom. Not being required to work. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a good point, right? Like, I do want money to be able to not have to be in an office. And I do want money to be able to do the health procedures and diagnostic prevention, you know, areas that, you know, I do acupuncture and bioresonance and um, extensive diagnostic the testing and this and that. Like, I'm going to turn 40 in less than a year. I don't look 40. The girl just guessed I was 27 yesterday. But, you know, I did Botox and I did collagen injections. I did facial harmonization. They're going to laser off these lines of my eyes in, like, that's the day I'm supposed to get tattooed, actually. On the sixth. Um, all right, <laughs> let's keep going here. Vasectomies are like under a grand, and that's without insurance. With insurance, even cheaper. So, oh boy, I helped you break away from Mormonism. Um, well, Mormonism is like. You know, and I apologize if this offends anyone, but it's just like straight up retarded anyways. Like South Park shows all the logical inconsistencies like in, in, in episodes. Basically like Joseph Smith said an angel came to him in a dream. That's how it's always done because no one can verify that. And, you know, I could say an angel came to me in a dream last night and, and, and you know, God wants us to do this and this. No one can verify that. Joseph Smith said the angel told him to like write out all these commandments of the Lord. There's like 99 rules or some bullshit like that. And he lost some of the tablets at one point. And someone with half a brain was like, well, if these were divinely inspired, you should be able to recreate them perfectly. And he recreated them like much differently than originally. But then he said the angel told him to do that, which was actually quite clever, I guess, to cover his tracks. Ugh, it's going to make my head hurt here. <laughs> It's <laughs> it's insane. Once you realize like what's going on, it's, it's it's like literally insanity. Like the majority of people on earth believe this stuff. But um yeah, I, uh, I'll just leave it at that, I guess. But like if you actually do the research and look at what what these things are, like how these things came about, it's like that fucking bastard. Right, there's always some fucking bastard lying. And then, you know, you have guys like R.C. Tyler doing the exact same shit in the modern day, using the same principles. Um, in most cases, it's not a good idea. It comes across like you're trying to brag and show off. I'm much more of a fan of talking about having dated models and... and working it into stories as pre-selection DHVs. 
so instead of being like hey look look at these pictures i have with girls what do you think about that right it's it's almost the same as like putting yourself in pictures with sports cars it just looks cheesy and it, and it has almost the opposite effect so instead i'll be like yeah i, I got a vasectomy and i did that because the model i was dating like she was really cool and like hot and all this but we didn't want to have a kid and so you just work this shit into stories and you know oh i was dating this ukrainian playboy model in poland and blah 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 right and i just worked that stuff into stories and like wow that he dates girls that are literally you know fashion models or, or in magazines or beauty pageant winners and i'm not at that level right so i must not be a big deal to him Um, okay. Uh, Alex and I actually settled out of court. Uh, there was almost a lawsuit. Let me read. I read this yesterday. Let me read the prepared statement by the lawyers. Um, One second here. <laughs> uh, let's see here. What the fuck is it? I do think I will be winning shortly in Japan and the U.S. against Modern Life Dating. I, I, I do think I will be getting good-sized judgments in both those cases soon. Modern Life Dating actually reached out to me personally the other day and said, hey, man, why don't we forget the lawsuit and, and make a truce? I'd be willing to talk to you man to man on Zoom. So, yeah, nice try, you dumb fuck. Should have thought of that when you were actively slandering the fuck out of me over a hundred times and received multiple warnings and made fun of them online, calling me a pussy. Okay. Now the fucking consequences are at your fucking front door and you're backed into a corner and you will serve as a fucking lesson for everyone in the industry about what happens um where's the where's the fucking save this somewhere so i can put on a post-it note basically paraphrasing uh alex and i to avoid a lawsuit deleted the videos about each other on both sides and are not speaking about each other further and are just focusing on our own businesses so no more questions about alex or comments um probably not i think when you look at the the merits of raising a child it's almost equivalent to an animal when it's when it's a baby and young it's shitting and eating and crying and then it's relatively naive and stupid and then it starts to rebel and hate you and then it moves away and you make peace on like some awkward terms all the while like it restricting your life massively <laughs> plus like i i have a strong feeling the world's gonna end in some horrible fashion in the next five to ten years so there's not really any point <laughs> yes a girl just did find my youtube channel one of the ones on rotation in in brazil <clears throat> and it's a lot to fucking handle i mean you know most people think like over the years when i'm like yeah i've been with a lot of girls guess how many people usually start off guessing like 30. they're like 30. i'm like no it's higher they're like 40. and i'm like it's a lot higher they're like 60. a lot a lot a lot higher and they're like 100 don't tell me it's over 100. i'm like yes it is so 
relativistically, 1500 is a very high number. I mean, even when I was at, I remember I was at like 160 leg count and I was thinking about like hitting 500 one day and 500 seemed like astronomical, even when I was at 160. So it literally is all relative. And I need to keep that in mind because as the number gets higher, and it's a real number, I know it exactly. But as it gets higher, it sounds more and more suspicious. Like, especially around the time I had a thousand, that was super annoying. I literally have been reporting it like almost daily, you know, by the day almost on each video, almost on the on the RSD Nation forums. In my old field report blogs, like was chronicling every lay one, like one by one, chronicled one by one on Instagram, on, on YouTube all the time. But around December 2018, when I had 1,000, people were like, oh, isn't that convenient? 1,000. It's like, actually, it's 1,003. Actually, it's 1,008. Like, it's not, I'm not one of those people that just puts out a round number because they're just making shit up with the Tates. All right. Um, and the Tates are both lying about their lay count, by the way. Okay. I need to, I, I probably will do a video on this. I don't know because we're trying to stay away from the drama a little bit. But, um, Basically, when I interviewed Andrew Tate, he told me he was at 450 lay count. Again, I don't understand when these people have these round numbers. 450 means you're not counting, okay? Because it shouldn't be right on a, a round number. But he said 70 of those were from his cam girls, which is employee sex, which isn't that impressive. Um, So 70 girl, you know, let's just take that stuff at face value. 450, 70 of which are paid cam girls. Okay. I had 300 lay count May 2014. Now he's saying thousands. Okay. Full fabrication. Tristan, his brother, at the time of me interviewing Andrew, when Andrew was, at, was claiming to be at 450, Tristan said he was at 700. Tristan being himself said Tristan was at 700. Again, why why 700 on the dot? You don't know the fucking number. You're not counting. And most people that aren't counting drastically and grossly overestimate. Now, Tristan and I were friends. Andrew and I were friends for a period before I had wanted nothing to do with them, you know, for, for a variety of reasons, being shady, running a pyramid scheme, being misogynistic, inciting misogyny globally on a massive scale, uh, doing endless months of shady, hit, shady shit, lying their asses off. Uh, Tristan shared with me, and there was only like three people following it, so I felt honored, of course, to be looking at his private Instagram of closes. Now, first of all, it was only pictures of girls, which was not, which is a little bit weird because he wasn't in, in any of the pictures. But that's neither here nor there. Let's assuming he did close all those. There was like seventy-five girls over the course of a year, so that means he would be at seven seventy-five. Okay, going off his dumb, and it was about a close every four days. Going off of his 700 remark, which again is very suspicious being a, a round number of 700. But if you add 75 plus 700, you get 775. However, he's now claiming over 1,000. And he was doing so even after that year. So these guys are just fucking saying whatever. I'm not saying they don't bang girls. I'm not saying they don't bang a bunch of girls. But they also hang, hang around in Dubai a lot and have a lot of money. And I'm sure a lot of the closes are from throwing money around. Sure as fuck, in Andrew's case, not from game. Okay, sure as fuck, because I know that firsthand. And also, it's very obvious how try-hard he is and how he thinks. And, and, and what's interesting is that looking at the psychology of Andrew Tate, this is, again, another fucking big tangent, but he used to be a fan of, like, the London day game model. So he was, like, into pickup, and it wasn't working for him. And he also didn't like the fact that pickup artists, and again, not many PUAs are good, so it's not stroke anyone's ego here but he didn't like how some guys were able to pull hot girls that didn't have a whole bunch of money and status so he went like balls to the wall to acquire money and status and he like resents people that can fuck more girls and hotter girls than him that don't have as much money and status as him because he thinks like oh well they all should come to me because i have a bugatti for instance dumb as fuck okay and insecure as fuck and now he, he preaches like pickup is dumb and like all this stuff the fuck out of here Right, all his, all the war room videos and, and different Instagram videos they show, it's just a bunch of bald guys with cigars drinking whiskey. Never any girls. Okay, and if there is, it's usually part of their staff or, or people that are just clout chasing and stuff like that. So that was sad. 
to hear them lie about their I mean, whatever you know i i know it to the number like i track it exactly and a lot of friends that i've had for over 10 years have seen me like send them every close like you know or a lot of them a lot of the closes i don't always send every single close to every single person but <laughs> it's exact like i like i take it extremely seriously but what i was going to say is that like when i was in college when I was at three lay count and I, I, a girl I liked, I found out she was at nine lay count. That bothered the shit out of me. It's like, how the fuck do you sleep with nine people? Uh, it's the middle of the week now. Uh, that's annoying. She had to confirm with her work. She was about to come over. I should confirm with her work and then the work called her in. It was the one that was like, I want you all to myself. No, she's not free to like Wednesday. <clears throat> All right. Um, let's keep going. Um, it depends. I mean, like, as I said, as long as I can do the things that I want to, which none of them like cost that much money, right? Like, like right now I have like two penthouse places, right? Like one for banging the side chicks and one I live in with Liz, but I have a sports car, but I don't need that shit. Like, I don't give a fuck about that stuff. Um, so no, I don't think I would care. I just wouldn't want to go back into an office. So that would be where I would draw the line. So let's say that like I went bankrupt right now. I think a trailer would be a fine option. I think Elon Musk just sold all his properties and he's living in one of those like Tesla box houses. Who gives a shit? I don't care. I say that living in a penthouse, but I really don't care. And I'd still fuck tons of chicks in there. It doesn't fucking matter. I have a client who's fucking lots of chicks in a, in a trailer. Josh. He might move to Brazil soon. Um, I'm not sure actually, but, uh, entirely, I mean, all Botox is doing, so there's so many myths around these things Like most people won't get a vasectomy because they're like, I don't want to be able to not have kids. Well, that's not the case. You still can have kids. Oh, but I don't want to be less of a man. You'll still make sperm. Everything will be the same. You just can't have accidental pregnancies. So it's important to know the facts right now with the same with STDs now with Botox, the reason why our skin is sagging is due to gravity over time. Uh, I learned all this before I did it. So you're getting wrinkles because your skin is sagging. When you get Botox, it's injecting a toxin to paralyze your face, right? You need to keep, you need to redo it like once a year. And it freezes it in that position. And then once the Botox wears off, it goes back to like being dragged down by gravity again. So you can like, keep your appearance from whatever age you start doing it you can keep like the amount like look i have it right now so when i raise my eyebrows i can't be entirely shocked because my forehead does not crease. but they even do it like on the sides of the eyes and stuff and, and in here so like when you smile and stuff like that there's less wrinkles but it's just freezing the gravity process in that one spot and then you keep re-upping it every every year so not that big of a deal. But I honestly don't know the side effects or, or whatever. Like I have filler injections in my face right now too. Apparently that's not good for you. But whatever. Like I'm also banking on the fact that as technological progress keeps increasing double exponentially, that we'll, like we're going to soon have nanobots that can go in and clear plaque from our arteries. We're going to have things that can augment red blood you know, allow us to hold our breath for minutes at a time underwater or run marathons at full pace. Our cognition will be expanded. Like it doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to be good enough. Right. So you have to weigh these things on short term positives and, and any kind of long term negatives are going to be combated and diminished by technologies that are forthcoming. That's how I look at it.
All right, we'll do a few, almost through the whole list of questions here, but let me just, let me just try to plow through the remainder here. Um, but I, I, I appreciate you guys being on here with me. I like talking about philosophy and science, and I almost became a philosophy teacher. I almost did a PhD in philosophy of mind under Andy Clark at Edinburgh in Scotland. Um, I was debating between either him or, or working under uh, Nick Bostrom at the Future for Humanity Institute at, at Oxford. And, you know, I guess these lives are the closest thing I get to talking about this stuff. But I do know a lot about a lot of stuff. So it is nice to showcase that. Um, so if the girl comes straight to the house and doesn't close, it's you shouldn't care if it closes. You should you should just set the next date before the end of that date. Anyways, a lot of girls won't close on principle just because they're not that kind of girl. Um. So. What's your favorite follow up? It it depends. Um, I mean, like as a standard practice, I like to do coffee. Or, if they don't come straight to the house, do coffee or drink date for the first date. Do public dinner for the second date, and third date can be straight to the house, meeting for ordering food or watching something or both. Um, but if the girl is like super prude or whatever, then, then I might go to public next. If it like just need a little bit more comfort, you can probably invite her straight to the house again. So it's like situation dependent. Um, let's see. I don't know there's a lot of downsides to my lifestyle though too, right? Like by running like a big rotation of like 14 girls, you have to deal with drama everywhere. Why don't you take me out more? Why don't you text me more? Why are you always so busy? Um, I feel like you're just using me for sex. You have to deal with that everywhere all the time. Plus all the new bullshit from all the new leads. That's a pain in the ass. Plus I have to neglect Liz and compromise my relationship with Liz on, on some levels inevitably because there's only one person of me. And all the time I spend with other girls, I'm not spending with her. So that's hard on her and that, you know, that, so there's, there's cons to every situation. It's, you just have to figure out, you know, what, what you can live with and, and what, what scenario you want, but the grass is always greener. It's easy when you're in a monogamous relationship to miss variety. It's easy when you're in player mode to miss a connection with one person. I try to have both, but there are downsides in that scenario as well. <laughs> From a pure financial standpoint, I guess, but there are there can be. I mean, I'm 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 going part of the way there. I mean, we have three dogs, and they'll have their own personalities and shit. They can't fucking talk back. They don't really do any fucked up shit to you. They're just mostly positive things that love you and stuff like that. So we're happy with that for now. Um, can you clarify? Do you mean economically? I mean, Nietzsche predicted, going back to Nietzsche again, he thought that nihilism would be the greatest catastrophe that the modern, that modern man would face. He said that science has replaced God and then like the nothing has replaced science. Basically like people are, we, we all, you know, unless you're living in poverty, we all have food. I assume no, none of us are living in poverty if you have a computer or a phone to watch this. Um, so due to the, like, ease of access of food due to the agricultural industrial revolutions, we all pretty much have it made. We, we have all our basic needs met. And there's studies, a significant amount of studies that were done well that show that happiness, there's diminishing returns with happiness. Like once you have your basic needs met, there's like kind of a, a bit of a leveling off. Right. Um, so what was my point here? The collapse of society. Nihilism and, and existentialism and like a, like a meaning crisis or lack of purpose crisis 
are here and they've been here for a while. And that's why people turn to substance abuse or video game addiction or, you know, it comes in all shapes and sizes. But people basically just need to find ways to occupy their time. Social media, you know, and, and a lot of those things control people because they're just playing off your dopamine reward systems. Like from a very primitive level, like there's, there's, I'm sure a lot of you have heard of the studies where they'll put a rat like in front of a pleasure button and it'll just like press it until it dies. It'll like starve to death. And we're, you know, we're not that much different. We're a little more advanced, but like, I, like I've said in other videos, you know, like the different social media platforms just have us addicted, right? Like, like why are people scrolling a Facebook news feed and looking at the pictures of their friends, mom's birthday, you know, and going down these rabbit holes of like complete nonsense. It's because they get like little dopamine hits. Why are they looking at Instagram every day? Why are they, you know, we're all usually hooked to some feed or usually more than one where you're scrolling the YouTube feed, you're scrolling the Instagram feed, you're scrolling the Facebook feed. And it's just like inundating. We have these like primitive brains that weren't meant for like this dopamine inundation. And we have like ease of access for all kinds of entertainment and all this stuff. So it's, you know, it's, it's a real problem. I mean, <laughs> I think like Kurtzwell talks about how, you know, there's more like healthcare and water and, and, resources or you know, like technology has made it so life is better for everyone but only from like a survival standpoint like with this like value collapse and and tele teleological collapse like lack of purpose ultimate purpose it's really left people you know it's kind of like the predicament they describe in fight club it's like we're working job we have no great war we have no great hardship our great depression is our lives. We buy shit we don't need and work jobs we hate, you know, to, so that we can pay the bills and go home and watch Netflix. It, it's all kind of depressing and, and sad in a way. But he said nihilism would be the greatest crisis and problem for the modern man to deal with. And I think all really you can do is rise above it and follow his prescription for the overman, for, for the ubermensch, and recreate your own values and meaning and try to work towards something, whatever it is, it's going to be different for each person, that leaves you feeling fulfilled. And as I've alluded to in recent videos, I think a, a critical component of that is being able to overcome adversity. And Nietzsche literally says in one of his quotes, Happiness is the feeling that power is growing, that resistance is being overcome. And any any time I've heard anyone talk about fulfillment and happiness in life, it, that's a critical component is being able to work on something they're passionate on, but also be able to keep overcoming challenges. So those people that retire, that you know, just stop working on something, like they very quickly get bored and, and unfulfilled because they're not. There's another happiness quote. I don't remember who said it, but someone said happiness is something to do something. Oh, what the fuck is it? Hold on, let me look this up. Something to do and something to hope for. Love as well, I think. Happiness. Something to do, something to love, and something to hope for. Joseph Addison. All right, let me fucking finish the stream so I can go do some other stuff here on Saturday. Um, they gamed the algorithm. They had lots of people pushing, lot recycling lots of content, lots of clips, and saying controversial stuff on purpose and engineering things with critical hooks to get people hooked into the videos. And so it was very clever. They just they just uh, greatly exaggerated and enhanced what they've actually done and accomplished. 
They didn't make their money from camming either. So there was a lot of lies and, and you know, it was a big, it was a clever facade and then gaming of the algorithm. Yeah, it's a pretty big deal here. They fire off fireworks and shit when there's goals scored. And the countries, it's like the Super Bowl in the U.S. I don't know, what, what do you mean, how I deal with it? I watch the games with my friends. <laughs> That's not true at all. I did like zero SMB upgrades for the majority of the years I was banging stunners. I mean, the way that I did it, I, I don't regret it at all. I like did no SMB upgrades, maximized my game skill, and made it so I could get nines and tens without any SMB upgrades. And then and only then did I apply all the SMB upgrades gym, tattoos, you know, hair transplant, Botox, etc. And I went to a place where stunners are the most plentiful in the world and super cool and easy to approach. And now I can just, you know, but I, but again, I've always been banging hot girls even before any SMV upgrades. It's not, but it's because he's tall. No, no, it's not because I'm tall. Yes. They cry and they fall in love anyways. Nice. Yeah, Leeds Machine and Occam's are on 50% off with the link in the description. Um, I always say I have an important work meeting. You finish banging, go to the phone. Oh, fuck. What is it? Oh, the programmers in India broke our site. I usually say the programmers in India because it's usually like 9 or 10 p.m. Because they're like, wait, wait, you have to work at night? Oh, yeah, it's 9 a.m. in India. Yeah, they broke our site and we can't accept payments. So I got to go deal with this. Sorry, I wish we could hang out longer. Start getting dressed. Just blame it on work or blame it on your friend visiting from out of town. Something critical that is not your fault. That's the important component there. By the way, Joao. Oh, no, that's a different Joao. Never mind. All right. Yeah, sorry. I feel bad for, for Liz because Liz was like ultra optimistic and cheerful and loving life when I met her. And now she stopped believing in God and ultimate purpose. So, because you, you know, once you know certain things, you can't believe in those things, but not the happiest of conclusions. Yeah, and, and the way that I built that product is I just, like, what what are the normal sequences I'm, I'm sending? What are the normal objections I'm running into? What do I do when this happens? What do I do when this happens? What are the other most common things happening? What do I do when those happen? And I just made it full comprehensive. And now you have a blueprint based on working 10,000 leads and banging 1,000 girls, and I've improved it since. That's when I made it in 2019. I had 1,000 closes and 10,000 phone numbers. Now I have... 1565, 1565 closes and 17,000 phone numbers. My close rate dropped below 10%, but, but I don't meet up for public dates anymore. So I let some of the leads slip through the cracks and I spend more time with, you know, I live with, with my chick and all that. Um, leads Machine is for all lead sources. There's charts for the online portion and for night and day game um yeah i mean an individual's only connection to a sports team is a loose conceptual connection due to geographic proximity of a player that you have no impact on or a team that you have no impact on whatsoever so it's fairly fascinating from a logical perspective how people can get so emotionally drawn into it when they literally have no, like zero impact. Like for those of you that are sports fans, you have zero impact on the team. And you only like that team because they are from a city close to where you live or, or from the city where you live. And if you're talking about like US sports, players get traded between teams all the time. The whole thing's pretty nonsensical, but, and it, would, it always was even more particularly interesting that people would talk about the team as if it was themselves. 
So like when you hear two people arguing about sports, they're like, we're going to do this to you. And the other one's like, no, we're going to do this. Oh, how, didn't work out so well for you yesterday, did it, Jim? And he's like, well, we'll get you next time. And I'm, I'm off to the side thinking like, what the fuck are you guys talking about? But, you know, that's life. So, um, yeah, no, their courses are, are terrible. I hate those guys, to be honest. I got I got drawn into the hype. And I'm ashamed of it. I didn't really know much about them at the time I interviewed with them. And then I came to know a lot more. And it's it's disgusting. And it's pathetic. All right. Uh, we'll wrap up there. You can you, if you didn't get emailed already. Designated survivor. Should be a pretty decent series. Um Kiefer Sutherland's like a big alcoholic in real life. Been jailed for DWIs. <clears throat> but he plays the president in the designated survivor story, which is a series, which is pretty interesting. I don't really watch many series, but I watched that one recently with my chick. Um, okay. So I'll wrap up there. I'll be live again tomorrow. On Sunday. Whew. There's like more and more shit taking over here in the background. We're going to be putting some stuff. <clears throat> I think we might be moving the stripper there and then putting a another sign here. So that's nice. All right. Thank you, everybody, for sticking with me. I'm going to go do some shit here in Brazil. Um, what other announcements are there? Yeah. All the, anybody that won second place that's on here, make sure you uh, look out for the call or text or email. Um, some people didn't want to redeem the voucher, or not in the position financially to redeem it, so we reached out to the next people in line. Um, let's see here. I've been looking into a lot of matters for you guys. I think most are bullshit too. Um, I made a video on Corey Wayne. It's one of the, it's, he's, he falls in the category of I can just look at him for five seconds and know he's not banging hot chicks. And he also has zero pictures with girls. So, you know, but to be fair, I don't know a whole lot about his teachings. But again, like, it's like, like, what's a good, what's a good analogy? Like, um, like a retarded person in a wheelchair claiming to be a basketball expert, um, a fat guy like a big, really big fat guy claiming to be, you know, crushing the gym or maybe even doing good in martial arts or, you know, that's, that's how most of these guys on YouTube look to me that are teaching dating. I can size a guy up almost instantly from what I know about the game. Like, okay, let me, let me try to put it this way. We're closing this note. Imagine you spent, imagine you were, you're very smart and analytical and you spent the majority of your adult life devoted to a certain craft such that you know every angle of that craft you know the optimal moves at all times for every little part of it not just for your own game and your own skill set in that craft but also any problem that anyone struggles in that particular craft or game you know exactly how to fix it with the optimal fixes as quickly as possible now imagine here's the fun part there's a bunch of other people claiming to be good at this game or experts at this game and they're talking about the game. See, if they didn't have to talk about the game or give strategy or give thoughts about the game, or if there weren't infields of them, you know, making mistakes everywhere. And like Kevin Ray Wilder is a great example. Okay. He admitted in February of this year that his late count was 45. Okay. 45. Dog shit. No business in the space. Literally zero. Only was here as a personal trainer. Now, I showed his speed date. It looked like a virgin noob. It looked like he was trying to recite old Todd lines. It was a train wreck. I showed his infield in where he was being coached by A.G. Hayden, who also sucks at game, of him approaching like some soft fives and stuff like that, and it, it looked like a virgin noob again. Okay, but Kevin has a whole lot to say about me, who's a real expert, the top real expert, about the game in general, about people's infield, about the skills of all the other coaches, you know, 
It's a guy that has no business ever talking about anyone in the space or any part of the game ever. But he, he always is, and people watch it. And such goes, you know, same goes for like most of the rest of the space. It's it's a whole bunch of people that, and if they're so good, show the pictures with hot girls. None of them have them. Only I have that, and I have endless amounts of them. That's why I made the little challenge. 365 days posting hot girl receipts. I can do that for 365 days. These guys can't do it for one day. They don't have even one. Okay. If we if you if we made a list of all the YouTube dating coaches, this might be a good video topic. And we said, does this guy have at least one picture with a hot girl in a hookup situation? I'm not talking about in a cold approach on the street. Okay, that that means literally nothing. <laughs> Cuz they like to show those. Oh, well well how did I how did I get this picture then? You walked up to a hot girl and she rejected you, but you took a picture before that. I don't that's not impressive to me. Almost all, I, actually, I don't know any that have even one, ex except maybe Coach Kyle, and his chick isn't even that great. But, like, does anyone else have any? I don't think so. That's just one dimension, right, the picture component. How many of them have full-length pulls taking girls home? I don't care if their infield is, you know, that's one argument people use against me in the industry. Wait, you filmed a lot of the infield you made years ago, so it doesn't count anymore. Our shitty infield demonstrating no taking girls home from public. It's from 2022 and yours is from 2017. So, you know, yours may be way better, but it's like, who gives a shit? Does it matter that I that I have all these polls from five years ago? No, of course not. It doesn't matter at all. But people will say, well, well our infield's better because it's recent. Show me you taking a girl home from walking and saying hello to, to getting her to your to your apartment door. I don't care if you close her or not. Show me you can do that. Almost no coach can. And, and it goes like that for every dimension. They have no pictures with hot girls or pictures with any girls for that matter, which is even more surprising. These are dating experts. Their girlfriends and wives are all busted. Not just below, not just average or not just a six or seven, but below average. And they have no fucking clue what they're talking about in almost every case. And that was a field day for me for a long time to make lots of content. I, I addressed almost all of them. <laughs> and you guys can't tell the difference. That's the sad part. I wish you guys could like enter my brain for one moment so you could see very quickly and clearly these guys are all frauds. But you don't know the difference. So, and even worse, is when they all like bind together and reiterate each other's wrong, technically wrong from a technical standpoint, game points. You're like, well, all these people say it's this way. They say to never double text. John Anthony says something opposite, but all these people say never double text. So I'm going to go with all these people. That's why you're not getting laid. I don't care if a million people say that. <laughs> if at any point, including right now or any point in the future, and it's always held like this in the past, if anyone on earth can show me any better way of doing any portion of my game, and that goes literally for any part of it, I will change it instantly. If after testing, the data supports that your way was better with proper tests. I'm not like married to my fucking methods my ego is not so tightly coupled with my teachings that i hold the hold all my strategies in like this i got to the level i got to precisely by trying to find anyone better than me in any area and adapting accordingly i welcome people to show me better ways and i welcome it with open arms i don't hear anyone else saying that that's the difference between me and the rest of the industry I have defined the optimal moves from start to finish at every step of the way. People can run their mouth about how I, you know, I'm an asshole or I'm a fraud or scammer with zero evidence. They can defame me. They can talk about my personal life. They can make fun of me. They can say I'm the worst in the manosphere or, or whatever, make memes. None of that means shit when I have hundreds of hot girl receipts 
over a hundred pulls on camera from start to finish. Over a thousand testimonials. And the best results by far, hands down, for myself and the clients. Those are the only relevant things that matter. The rest is all noise. So, but since it's like the self help industry, you can have people like RST Tyler, who in the normal world is laughed at as a nerd and a fuck up and a weirdo. But in the special pickup community, he's revered as like the ultimate hero and ultimate pussy slayer, which is mind boggling to say the least and extremely scary. And he tricked everyone of that for over well over a decade and is still currently tricking endless amounts of people. That's scary. But. As frustrating as all that has been over the past 10 years of watching the circus and the charades, especially when I had like one or 2K subs, I think I, I, think I had 2K subs when I hit 1,000 girls. Yeah. I had 2K subs when I hit 1,000 late count. And Trip Advice had me on his channel and said, this guy banged 1,000 girls. I believe him because I showed all the proof of it. Not, not me banging every single girl, but as close as the next best thing. And... <laughs> I hope you're being sarcastic. Otherwise, you're completely retarded. Look how, how stupid of a statement that is. Please tell me you're being sarcastic. Um, now I lost my train of thought. What the fuck was I saying? Can someone remind me what I was saying? I'm to fucking close this out here. <laughs> I just went full space cadet mode thinking about the million ways this is a, a ridiculous statement oh thank you trip advice trip advice had me on when I had 2,000 subs and said this guy banged a thousand girls I told I just dazzled everyone with strategy and I picked up like 800 subs from that interview he has the biggest channel in the space and what does that say? It, it says that the, the popularity or the amount of views or subs literally has mean, means nothing compared to the person's skill level. And then who's my equivalent in the fitness industry? A guy like Jay Vincent. When, when I interviewed Jay, and he has a relatively small channel. When I interviewed Jay, I said, who else do you recommend on YouTube? He said, just these two guys, and they're not that popular. Uh, okay. Yeah. No, but... People, a lot of people make that point seriously. Like this is David Bond's main talking point. Okay, Bradicus assessed from a fairly honest, or at least he claimed honest standpoint, rated David Bond's uh, cold approach a two and a half out of 10. Okay, he's tried to make him feel that it's, it's God awful. His game sucks from countless sources. He pays girls in third world countries with Bitcoin cash. Me and Bradicus exposed all of it. And he says, well, John Anthony's infield's old, so it doesn't count. Right? Why? Why? If I can show you from 2017 taking a girl home from the club, and I can break all that down from a technical standpoint, that sure as fuck applies in 2022. 100%. There's no part of that interaction that doesn't apply because it's from five years ago. Doesn't mean shit. The, the only way his argument would make sense if there was like some new technology or, or my strategy had radically changed or something like that, but it hasn't. All right. Um, so again, I, I just want to end on that note. Every piece of the game, and I, and I take this very, very, very seriously. That's why I've you know gone at people so hard. Every little piece has been optimized, and I will change, and I mean that, quite literally any part of the system i'll even change the entire system if someone can show me a better way of doing it i'll change the entire system no one can and that is precisely why i can listen to anyone talk about the game for a few minutes and know by how he's carrying himself and in the in the, the way he's talking about the game if he's good or not and in every case at least on youtube he's not he isn't he's fucking clueless
And then you're like, okay, but wait, how, how many pictures does he have with girls? Zero. How much infield does he have? Zero. Where's his testimonial? Zero. Oh, okay. But he's saying he's like the man in the game. And that's enough for the followers. They're like, okay, case closed. He's the man. They don't know his advice is shit. They dogmatically accept it. They don't demand a high standard of empirical proof. Why would they? It's the fucking internet. Most people don't even give a shit about getting better at the game. They're just here to to get some entertainment. Look how the, look how the fucking views have dropped down since I've gone to just pick up teaching mode. I was getting like 5K views a video when I was doing reactions and starting drama or, or you know, engaging in drama, I should say. And now I'm getting like 1 to 2K views with the the pickup training content nobody gives a shit those are always my least popular videos i can put out like like some of my most valuable videos out of like the 1.5k videos i have i almost have as many videos as my late count now um some of the most popular videos or sorry some of the most valuable video videos have like 1k 2k views it's insane it's like stuff that that would like life change the results with chicks All right. <clears throat> yeah, and that's how everyone should be. Okay, so people should show a little more respect and and fucking admiration. People would rather just like troll me and and talk shit, right? But again, look at who's doing the trolling and talking shit. It's usually someone who has no business in this space, hasn't accomplished anything, hasn't even accomplished one percent of what I have, not for themselves or their clients. So. <laughs> Thanks. No, I know. It's it's just it's frustrating from my standpoint because we haven't scaled yet and there's just so many there's just so much bad advice. It's like literally like almost the entire industry is just full of trash advice and people don't know that. All right. But I'm going to wrap it up here. Thank you guys. <clears throat> I'll be back. Yes, I'm going to do more videos on health. I'll be back live tomorrow. And take advantage of that deal before it ends. Before the 50% off. Okay. For those products. It's like my life's work. <clears throat> I think at 50% off point, they're like 350 bucks. Which should be attainable by pretty much anyone, even if you're broke. You can find a way. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Chris. And I will. Um, Our fucking maid broke... She like knocked this statue over and it snapped in half and we glued it. That's why there's that big fucking scar across the the middle. And I like that I can show nipples here. Because it's art. There's multiple nipples. The nipples here in the art. She just fucking stacked the background with art nipples. <laughs> All right. Talk soon, guys. I'm going to release this week my 53-page paper on uh, reducing disease risk to close to 0% for $23 a month. So look out for that. All right, guys. Everybody have a good, good weekend.